What a game last night. Yeah? Yeah. What game are you talking about? Edmonton and Anaheim. That's what I thought. Yeah. Incredible game. Eight goals in the third period. Yeah. Just when it looked like the Oilers are going to blow them out, and it was 4 nothing. All of a sudden, Anaheim staged this great comeback. And if they wouldn't have given away a really careless, greasy goal, they'd still be playing. That was a great game. I'm not talking about that crap. I could care less about that. You're not gonna. You're not gonna like. I got more important things to tell you. Yes. You. You, you know. Remember I told you yesterday about the uh, salespeople that were sitting around watching your show while you were in Baltimore. Yes. Looking into an empty studio and they wanted to do the same with me while I'm sitting up here in Toronto. Yeah. Well, I found out just minutes ago, just moments ago, th- this will this will send you into orbit. You know how Monday next Monday is Memorial Day, and of course you're not working Monday, are you? No. No, neither am I. But George is. Because at least one thing about us, you know, whether if I'm not here, then George is on. At least we try to, you know, maintain some continuity and put on a show as opposed to just, you know, dragging somebody out from a dumpster and putting him on here. Well, come to find out that Todd Dreck, who is the most... I'm going to hire a hitman for Todd Dreck. And, you know, next time you start your car, Todd, I'd be real careful, okay? I'd be real cautious. If you hear, like, any hissing sound or smell any smoke, <laughs> this little son of a bitch... Uh, was going to take a one of his car dealer uh, sponsors, and he was going to have the Big O do it. He requested for the Big O to do a uh, noon to four remote that they were going to do on a Saturday, but it got bumped or something. So he was going to take four hours, including two hours of our show, m- meaning me and George, and uh, stick it in there. Well, Todd, stick it. And, of course, as usual, he didn't go to Clarence with us. He had Chris Jones, the sales manager, go to Clarence, just like he had him come to me last week about some account that I really didn't want to do. Just a little, I'm telling you, man, the sales department, we need an enema in that place. We need a big, gigantic blueberry enema. It's, it's unbelievable what's going on there. It's scandalous. It is absolutely scandalous. I've been in the business for 140 years, and every time you think you've seen rock, rock bottom, oh, these people find a new bottom, so to speak. Rock them. It's amazing. Can you imagine that? Uh, I, I've never heard anything like that. No, neither have I. I mean, they don't. They see. I said to Clarence just now. I said, you know, maybe this goes with the with what's going on between two and four. Like we don't have any. We're free form radio. You know, just uh, you know, show up whenever you feel like it, and maybe we'll put you on. And we're just going to put on what the sales department wants us to put on. Uh, evidently, the evidently, they're calling all the shots now. This new Yahoo from North Carolina, wherever he's from, he's calling the shots. It has nothing to do with the format. It's got nothing to do with anything that we want to do or endorse or believe in. It just has to do with whoever's got any cash out there that they can grab a hold of, uh, they'll put it on the air. It's like we're, maybe we can, like, start bartering the time, like, you know, on the KET, like they do. Like they used to do across the street before they put that crap on the air. What do you think? <laughs> And then today, between noon and 1230, which we got the early uh, Marlin pregame at 1230, right. uh, we got three breaks in that half hour. I don't think I've ever, all the years I've been on the air, had three breaks in a half an hour. But you know something? We'll get them in. If I have to do them all back-to-back, it, because we're, I told you before, we're not all sports radio. We're all spots radio. And this new guy they brought in, he's determined to make that happen. Yeah, we had, uh, I had a nine-minute break today. Beauty. But that should be really good for uh, the audience. Yeah. Good for uh, length of listenership. Unbelievable. Nine-minute break. We're back to, like, the, the worst team uh, breaks again. They never learn their lesson, man. These, these people are just a bunch of whores. That's all they are. You know, the Banjo Boy Group Inc., they're just a bunch of whores, just whoring the frequencies and just sucking up as much cash as they can. I guess like everybody in the media, you know, that's, that's all we are now. Glorified Kathy Willitses so, without, the, uh, without the freckles. I was going to tell you about the slot machines. It was in, there was oh, a I story got the, I got, What do you mean you were going to tell me about it? Don't you think I'm way ahead of you on that? That's also very depressing. Good God. You talk about slow. What the hell are these people waiting for? You were telling me July. Yeah, remember I kept saying to you, yeah, but what year? The ringing and clanging. Are you talking about the Sun Sentinel story? Yeah. yeah. The ringing and clanging of slots is likely to be heard in Broward by Labor Day. Labor Day, last time I checked, is in September. Yeah, well, one of the places is going to be ready to go. I guess Hollywood Dog Track or whatever they're calling it now. Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras will be ready in August, and Gulfstream yeah. will be ready Labor Day. And Pompano Park. Pompano, early next that year. sounds like it's going to be not going to be ready for early next year. Eons, year. yeah. Well, don't say eons, unless you want to blow that account down. That they've only had them on the air thirty years. <laughs> well, <laughs> say, we... like, what, what's taking them so long? They have, I guess, they're waiting to build. Well, the they place. had their original plans, you know, and then of course they had all that damage with the hurricane, and then of course your fat ass governor and legislature put the big stall routine on, so they had a, you know, they had to start from scratch and re redesign the whole thing all over again. The slots in this state will be taxed at a higher rate than any place in the country. Right, just to try to make sure that it fails. That's correct. That, that's your fat-ass governor, who now they're propping him up to be the next commissioner of the NFL. Do you that, see that story? That is the biggest 
bag of crap. crap. Yes. No, it's the second biggest after Orlando Al Zaquiri doing a remote mom Monday from noon to 4 or 5.30. There's as much chance that the Big O is going to be taking over part of the show Monday or any other day as there is of you walking out the door today and finding $80 million in cash and small bills in that little refrigerator in the other room there. I think I'll go look. Yeah, look in the freezer. Maybe uh, Bill Jefferson's got some. Maybe somebody's head is in the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Jimmy Hoffa's in the freezer. Todd Dreck. Well, yeah. Oh, brother. Don't don't tempt me, man. Remember Jeffrey Dahmer? Sure. The body parts in the freezer? I yeah. think that's Todd Dreck. In fact, I can just see it now. Dreck in the freezer. <laughs> Remember that song, Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple? <laughs> I can see it now. Dreck in the freezer. I can see it. I can write it. I have Boca <laughs> Brian record it. Chicken neck. Oh, man, he is just one of the most evil little people who ever came down the pike. Oh, God, of any size. And always hiding behind somebody else's purse strings. You know, always hiding behind Screw Ann, and now he hides behind Chris Jones. And, oh, could I get you to do this? Come on, you jackass. God, do I hate him. I just Nick. like him to update the copy once in a while. That's all. Yeah, you know something? A lot? You're, you're, in, you're in La La Land now. You must be, you might, maybe George shared some of his medication with you yesterday because what's going on since this new guy came in here was bad enough before. We don't get any new copy. We just have the same, it's just, we're, we're as stale as last year's Halava, man. It's just unbelievable. And, of course, they're, that, they're not into that part of it. See, they're just into writing business. Desperate. Desperation. When did your summer schedule start? <laughs> no, not soon enough. Not soon enough at about three and a half weeks. And, boy, I'm telling you, I'm counting the minutes. Isn't it amazing to you that these, the, I mean, I asked you yesterday, maybe I should ask you every day, maybe because maybe you'll forget to tell me that there's some, some great, exciting new development that you forgot to tell me about. I, you know what? I'm just, I just come in and do the show, go yeah, home. that's it. You know, me that's... too. Me too. I do the show, and then I go home. Although today, at 1230, I'll be all dressed and out the door. Yeah. Well, at least I'll you be on my way. Get a little extra time there. That's okay. Looking, looking for a good machine. Oh, yeah, no complaints about that. And, and George, of course, had mixed feelings about that thing on Monday because, he, you know, he'd like to get off of there at noon. It's a holiday. I think it's a phenomenal idea. <laughs> <laughs> Far be it for us to stand in the way of the station making a buck. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, that one thing about this show, I mean, obviously I haven't gotten them good ratings eight and a half years or made them any money. So, you know, this, this show is basically, uh, you know, at, at, their, at their convenience and pleasure. When they have nothing else to put on here, they'll put this show, my show on. Like when Stern, when he went and signed that illegal deal, you know, and lapped over under this show, which they were already... It, it's like selling a house that you don't own or selling it to two different people. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. These people belong... I think they belong in uh, in Rayford. They belong in Stark. Bring back old Sparky, man. Fire that baby up and just line up the whole the, the whole Beasley clan. Although before the Beasleys, put Joyce's ass in there first. I don't think if Joyce's ass was in there, anybody else would want to sit down. But on that note... Yes... Happy Wednesday to you. The Marlins won a game last night. That's two in a row. Oh, oh God, are they on fire, huh? They yeah. finally found a team they could beat. Yep. They had 10,979 tonight. You know which, what? Uh, if they had 10,000 there last night. Yeah. Please. Chickens are peeing all over the place, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, but uh, you got to remember that the heat game was on. They had some stiff competition there on TV. Yep. So they had maybe they had next to a number in there. Maybe it was like one thousand nine seventy nine. But <laughs> yeah, they yeah. made that mistake. Well, they didn't put anybody extra. They just put a O oh. in there, like they got across the street. Like we got between two and four, we got O's. What do you? Maybe I should change my mind on that. Maybe we should just let the have George. You know, maybe I'm being selfish there. Let's have George get off the air at noon. That's a holiday, right? Right. Yeah, George deserves a break. Yeah, let, let's let's go ahead and do it, Clarence. Go in there and tell him I changed my mind. I'll go tell him. I'm serious. I'm not joking. What do you think? Humper, that's up to you. <laughs> I mean, not not to set a precedent and let them do it again, but I, I think if they you know if they want to put uh, that jackass I mean uh, the big O on the air, he after all is rock solid. Yeah. More power to him. And, oh, and I never talked to you about his plans for uh, he went he went to our new leader. He's oh. got plan. He want he wants us to have more uh, minorities on here, meaning more people who speak it up, pick it up on I heard about he thinks, that. Yeah, he thinks that's the solution <laughs> to our ills is if we put more uh, Spanish speaking people on here. No hable inglés aquí. Sp Spanish sports, what do you think? I think a lot they of have soccer. That. A lot of soccer, that's his specialty. He says, if Hank can talk about horse racing, I, I, I can't talk about soccer, you know. Mm -hmm. Hola. And, of course, I think, you know, I'm going to the World Cup in Berlin this summer, so, although I'm not going to the games. My friends are going to the games. I have no interest in that. I would like to see that. So I would not. It's a spectacle. One of the last Dauphin broadcasts I did was an exhibition game in Berlin. Yeah. Yep. I think that was the end of the franchise right there. I think that's what put him in, in the tank. I'll never, that was the one where Rick didn't know he was on. 
Oh, yeah? And he was talking about the, the oh, food. About the, oh, yeah, about the food. The food Somewhere the, we had that. You, yeah, that you know, was one of the bits you played. Oh, yeah, about the chicken. Yes. Is that, what, what is that? Is that chicken? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Somewhere we got that, that on the cart. That's that, great. That was done in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he was a panic. And, of course, he took himself so seriously that I'm sure that once he found out it was on air, he just about uh, bust a gut. Uh. <laughs> he took himself very, very seriously. Unlike us, who just want the money and the hell with these <laughs> people. In the so, so did George, Josh, did George go in there and tell Clarence the good news? No, I'll wait for the... Uh, no, no, I want you to do it now. I'm, I'm doing it now. I'm going. <laughs> go ahead. Do it now before I change my mind again. Look, if they got cash on the table, man, let's just take the money. And then maybe they set a precedent. Then maybe Mondays I'll just work from 10 to noon. How's that sound? If they're going to send a precedent. They can put uh, rock solid. They go there in Spanish sports from noon to 2 every Monday. Get a, I get a 40 share with that crap. I guarantee you. I can interview a Pele and all the other no speaking English uh, athletes out there. Probably less of those little jockeys, you know. Javier Castellano, he won the uh, Preakness. Yep. He can speak. I've heard him speak. Yeah. He, he, talk, he, he speaks like all the other jockeys, including the female jockeys. They all sound the same, like munchkins. They sound like they're on helium, you know, like uh, a Gildy. Don't they? They all pretty much sound the same. By the way, whatever happened <clears throat> Whatever happened to Randy Romero? Did he get injured? Um, Randy Romero, I'm not sure he's still with us. Oh, he died? I don't know. I, I, oh. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> That's always a bad move. Without knowing. Yeah. But uh, Romero had... The reason had... I mention that is because Jerry Bailey finally retired, and the two of them looked so much alike. It was always staggering to me. I couldn't tell them apart. They looked very much alike. They had that and same moon... Jerry moon... does a great job with us. Moon face? Yeah. He's very good. Well, good luck to you with that Belmont, man. You, be you better hope that uh, Bernardini runs in there. You ought to call up the connection and say, either run or getting a hit, man. You talking about the ninth at Belmont on like two weeks from Saturday? Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm sure they're devastated by that one. Yeah. Well, uh... Bar Barbara's still alive, I guess, huh? Yes, he is. <clears throat> and doing very well. Very yeah. frisky and uh, bouncing around. But it reminds me of the um, bird flu thing. You know, they got everybody all panicky that uh, you know, they could get infection in the other leg. And I mean, I, granted, there are risks, but I, you know, I think they're a little getting carried away. I think they're covering their butts. Yeah, exactly. Somebody asked me yesterday about Lloyd's of London, you know, if they had an insurance policy. Yeah, they, I, just, they did. I'm sure that they did, but those are very expensive now for a horse, as you probably know. There was a story about that in, I think, today's Herald. Yeah. Right? Uh, the horse was insured for $25 million. Wow. And, it is, and it is extremely expensive. Mm. So. Well, they sure as hell wouldn't insure us for $25 million. Not when they find out what they're doing on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll insure Orlando for $25 cinco. Well, that makes solid. us uninsurable. Yeah. yeah. 20 cinco. Okay, listen, have a great day today. Yeah, I, hope you you, uh, I hope you clean up real big time today. I'm uh, going to go out there and find a good machine, man. I'm going to take zillions of dollars out of that place. I'm going to clean that place out. I'm headed for the dentist. Are you really? Yeah. But if I get done quick enough, I'll be at call. Today. Yeah. Well, you'll, you'll have your cell phone. Okay. Keep in touch. All right. Bye. Right. The views expressed Rock in the solid. previous Rock program solid. are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and do not reflect those of the Beasley Broadcast Group, no, staff, no, no, no. advertisers, or agencies. Sports Radio 560, oh. WQAM, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Holy cow. Neil Rogers is right. The Cubs suck. Absolutely. Charlie and Denise got the whole thing started. Heather and Richie, they also parted. Richie said as long as he's been laid. Billy don't mind him a banging David said. Oh, what a line. He wonders if it's worth the gamble. Maybe score a free song with Nev Campbell. Richie's just gonna hang on and enjoy the ride. His ex wife, heaven's got a pain down highway. David Spade will probably fall in sideways. Rich and Tommy Lee stretched her out so wide. His ex wife. Oh, yeah. 1014. So let me ask you, did you go in there and give the good news? I did, and he ran down the hall to see if, uh, you know, it wasn't too late. <laughs> oh, man. Wow.
Why the hell not, man? We're here to cooperate, right? And slack as much as possible. That's right. We're here to cooperate and get as much extra time off as possible. This is QAM, and let's face it, folks, we just don't care, okay? <laughs> I mean, why the hell? Why should we be uh, the odd ones out? I mean, right. we're already odd enough as it is. We but, shouldn't care you know, more than they do. And then I'll get both of you guys off at noon. I don't know about Josh, who's going to be bored up in it. Well, yeah, you won't have anything to do with that. That, right. that, should, that should be part of the deal. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Is that both of you guys get to leave. But he, a gold of flagship line, gets a 91 rating by Cigar Aficionado Cigar Insider and 9.1 by Smoke Magazine. This rich-flavored, well-balanced, full-bodied Nicaraguan cigar has got earthy hints of dark roast coffee, chocolate, spice, and pepper flavors. Also try the Mejia de Seo. The hottest release cigar in the last 10 months gets a high rating of 91 by Cigar Aficionado's Cigar Insider. A powerful, big, gigantic, gut-wrenching cigar with complex notes of leather, earth, and pepper. The finish is long and full-bodied with additional spice and a note of charred wood. For a South Florida tobacconist nearby, you log on to BahiaCigars.com or call them at that toll-free number, 1-800-35-BAHIA. That's 1-800-35-BAHIA. This is Neil Rogers. Rock solid. This is 560 QAM. Oh, God. In theaters now. From the director of the Da Vinci Code, it's the Bush Code. He sent mixed, mis- mixed messages. I cannot understand. There's an ingenious code locked into President Bush's rambling speeches. How is our children learning? What are they talking about? When deciphered. Fool me once, shame on, shame on you. If fool me, you can't get fooled again. Reveals a message that actually makes sense. I had a little too much to drink. <laughs> Beer, Jack Daniels, and uh, absolute. And I'm sick. That is a problem. The Bush Code. Witness the biggest cover-up in human history. I'm here to discuss our strategy. Without knowing the facts, then again, I don't have a lot of intelligence. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Oh. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Oh. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around ten o'clock tonight. What is that five show? See, when you come right down to it, I mean, there are times of the year, like, uh, you know, New Year's and Christmas, when we have ball games, and maybe you'll come in for an hour or whatever, right. and then there's a ball game or a like show, right? Spackle. Like so spickle. why not have the big, oh. huh? What do you say? That's Rock right. Solid. Absolutely. I think it's do a, a great show idea. in the middle of the day. Huh? A daytime show. I mean, you know, the fact that we were going to have you on there, and quite frankly, probably would be the only ones that have a regular person on on a holiday, which right. would seem generally to be the only ones. Why All would we want to do that? Because somebody might probably want to listen to that. We yeah, we don't money want to on the, there's good money on the table, man. That's we want right. that money. We want that cash. Give us the effing money. Cash or else. else. Here's a fax that we got this morning that you got. It says, hello, George, misspelled, and greetings from North Carolina. Well, what do you expect about spelling from North Carolina? Nothing. We don't grade. Oh. Waynesville, North Carolina is the home of the East Waynesville Baptist Church, whose minister declared from his pulpit that any members of the church who do not support President Bush and his war should be thrown out of the church and condemned to Hades. The minister was subsequently fired at it after the nationwide publicity which the church received because of his statements. The town also has one, only one movie theater. The theater refused to show Michael Moore's Fahrenheit 9-11, and two, is now refusing to show the Da Vinci Code. He's got a phone number here to hear the owner's reasons that he'll never show the movie. It says almost as good as the bridge tender. And three, a public library with a computer internet facility. I'm able to bring up neilrogers.com on it, but when I try the Stephen Colbert at the White House, I'm unable to do so because it is censored as pornographic material. <laughs> this is in Waynesville, North Carolina. Oh, that's where our new sales manager came from, isn't it? Yeah. Stump? Isn't that our new sales manager, Stump? That's where he come from, North Carolina. He sure stumps me, I'll tell you that. What the hell he's got in his mind. Here's the poll from yesterday. Other than George W. Bush, what person makes you most want to puke when you see them on TV? 1,671 vote. I don't know what Eric was up to yesterday. I faxed him the poll for today about 85 times, and he finally put it up there. I could have called him and said, what's going on there, fatso? But I, I don't like bugging him, you know? Just send him a text from your fancy phone. Oh. Anyway, a text on what? You have his cell phone number, don't you? Yeah. Well, just text him. That way you don't have to talk to him. Oh, <laughs> that's bad. Boy, you're brutal. Oh, that's a good idea, though. Other than GW, what person makes you want to puke when you see him on TV? Bill O'Reilly, 350. The worst person in the world, according to Keith Olbermann. By the way, Keith Olbermann's uh, numbers are kind of like what we got between two and four, unfortunately. But that's all of MSNBC. They have no audience. Pat Robertson, 326, a very solid uh, second. Rock solid. Jesse Jackson, 236. 
Sean Hannity makes a lot of people want to puke, 174. Don Rumsfeld, Herman Gehring, 118. Todd Woodrick Sanchez, 118. Same person, different language. Rosie O'Donnell, 83. Star Jones, 57. Nancy Grace, 39. Tucker Carlson, 31. Bono's got... About 30, man. Mary Cheney, that self-hating dyke, that wicked, nasty dyke's got 28. Paula Abdul, 25. Chris Matthews, 14. Denise Rodman, 13. William Donahue of the Catholic League. <laughs> He's got eight. Mary Madeline, seven. Billy May, seven. The Oxy Clean Guy. And Ron Reagan, Jr., the ballet dancer. You fairy. Has siete, seven. Solamente siete. Soltanto siete. See, I'm mixing languages now. That's very bad. That's very... Even no, I don't confused. get everybody listening. Yeah, let's do a little Italiano, a little Espanol. Uh, how about Latin for all our Roman listeners? Oh, fiddly means bonis belly. Oh, yeah, we have lots Domino of... Uh, how about a little La Plume de Matant, a little bit of that, right? Like that spot that your yeah, buddy uh, Brett's got me doing, I can't pronounce. You know, it, it, we, we have reached... <laughs> no, seriously, we have reached epidemic proportions of insanity in this radio station. And, of course, your good, close personal friend that I paid $1,000 to so we could get your contract renewed, that I paid him a grand out of my pocket... Uh, he he's like non compass. Uh, he don't respond. He's uh, not in touch these days. I'm not talking about on the phone. I'm just talking about a, a, a non invasive Period. email, huh? Just in general. Yeah, d just a non invasive email that would like uh, answer some of the questions that I have and things that are going on. It's just uh, he's uh, useless, as useless as boobs on a frog. Here's today's poll, and it's pretty interesting how the audience has turned. We've done this before because you know I keep going through these different uh, emotions and uh, the whole repertoire. About 80 million times. So the callers suck. How come the, we're not streaming, by the way? We're Did having we, some issues, oh, and I don't know where they are. Oh, this went yet. back up. As soon yeah. as I said, we're having what? Issues, and I don't know whose end they're on. Uh, Probably ours. It just went back to the green light again. Thanks, God. The callers suck 109. Uh, if Neil stopped taking calls, I'll kill myself, 67. I hate this poll, 57. <clears throat> Listen less, 55. Stop listening, 33. Bye-bye. Kiss the radio, 29. That's what I voted. I'll kiss it from the inside out. Listen much less, 26. Listen more, 22. Listen much more, 18. So if you take listen more and much more, that's 40, and listen to the same, 332. That's uh, almost 50% right there. Kiss the radio. You know, if you take all the uh, ones that basically rip the callers and ask like the callers suck and put them all together, you got 75 to 80%. And you can only assume that the callers, the, the 12 misfits, that they probably voted numerous times on, especially I'll kill myself. Because what are those uh -oh. people going to do oh, if, I, no if I don't, you know, if they they'll, don't have kill themselves. two or three minutes of greatness on the air? The great there's no other local area. talk. Huh? Since there's no other real local talk. I see. They have no other, well, what do you mean by that? They can call across the street. Like I said. <clears throat> they can call the sports shows. In fact, uh, that one promo we had from the Humper Show a couple days ago was uh, your friend Reverend uh, Schmuck. Oh, yeah. So they already do. That's their life. Well, they have... I have no life. I have no life. And like I said yesterday, after all of this time, the idea that I'm going to just hand the show, the keys to the kingdom, over to the same 10 or 12 misfits, it, it's just pointless. You know, I think, I think the, the answer is to do what we did yesterday. And that is, every now and then, when they least expect it, reach over and punch one up, and voila, work two for two yesterday. That won't happen again, probably. I don't think that'll happen again anytime soon. I'll tell you what will happen sometime soon. That is the Marlin pregame show. Marlin's on deck at 12.30. Looking to make it three in a row oh! over the hapless, useless Cubs, man. Marlin's in the Cubs at 105 from PP Park. Jim Mandich follows the ball game till 7. And then we got, oh, my God, look at that. Oh! Geldy's 7 to 10, the Eddie Kaplan show. It's not bad enough. Eddie usually has to follow the Marlin broadcast, a fate worse than death. Now he's got to follow. Oh, oh my God, the QM hyena. That is a sad task. Oh, Stuttering Gill, who all of a sudden is spelling his name right today. I, I, I'm not buying this. He never. They, there was never this format on his faxes before. Yeah. If Neil and the uh, work that goes into that, forget about that. Do a smarter thing and call Club Nautico at 1-800-BOAT-RENT right now. Why would you want to pay the expenses of owning a boat when you can rent one totally hassle-free and save a lot of cash, too? So join the club at Club Nautico. Call 1-800-BOAT-RENT. You'll be amazed just how easy it is. There are no docking costs, no expensive upkeep, no insurance, no hurricane preparation. When you have a boat from Club Nautico, it's totally stress-free and truly affordable, too. Call 1-800-BOAT-RENT. No getting the boat ready, because Club Nautico does it for you. No cleaning up, either. At Club Nautico, here's how it works. You just give them a call, tell them when you want to uh, have the boat ready, just hop on the boat and go and have a great time. When you're done pulling to the dock, get off and just walk away. It's that simple. 
Club Nautico, 1-800-BOAT-RENT-FUND, unlimited, uh, unlimited voting to pay as you go from small boats to yacht charters, all of these things and everything in between, it's Club Nautico. Call 1-800-BOAT-RENT and let the folks at Club Nautico tailor a plan to fit what you need and your budget, too. Get on the water today the inexpensive, the hassle-free way with Club Nautico. Call 1-800-BOAT-RENT. This is Neil Rogers. Rock solid. This is 560 QAM. The big Neil Rogers on Sports Hall Radio, WQAM. Hello, this is Michael V. Hayden, director of the NSA. I'd like to speak to you about the database of telephone calling records the NSA has been compiling. The NSA does not listen in on personal telephone calls. For example, although we know Nathan R. Brothrice of 714 Gretzel Road in Belford, Kansas, made a two-minute call to his wife on Saturday, May 14th, who was visiting her cousin Sandra Fletcher in Lumford, Nebraska, we do not know what they spoke of. We are also completely unaware of the details of conversations between Nathan and his secretary, Mimi Volvano, during three calls on the same day, lasting 22, 28, and 117 minutes. Really. And while we are aware of the 47 calls Joseph Blanston placed to several numbers in the 900 and 976 commercial area codes, we have no interest to whatsoever in any deviant behavior he may be engaged in. Although we know he placed a seven-minute call to gay toys in Hollywood, California, we do not know what, if anything, he ordered. Really? Remember, our goal is protecting you from terrorists, not compiling a list of citizens who behave in ways that are condemned by our narrow interpretation of the Bible, praise Jesus. And we certainly have no plans of someday rounding them all up and pushing them into a fiery pit. Really? The NSA. You can trust us, because we're good. How about you? I got a record that you don't have in there because it's too old. The Flying Saucer by uh, Buchanan and Goodman. Really? There's a little clip from a Long Tong, Sa- long, long Tong Sally in there. Remember, you never heard that Flying uh, uh, Saucer by Buchanan and Goodman? Yeah, I have it in my hand. Oh. You have it? On a cassette. Oh. I have a Buchanan and Goodman collection on cassette that I've been meaning to digitize. Oh, look at this. A reverend who introduced Republican gubernatorial candidate Charlie Crist during a breakfast with other pastors Monday said the Lord came to him in a dream two years ago and told him that Crist would be the state's next governor. Hey, Charlie. You fairy. How do you like that? The reverend O'Neill Dozier said that before the dream, he didn't know Crist, nor had Crist made known his plans to run for governor. <clears throat> he didn't know him in the biblical sense. The Lord Jesus spoke to me, and he said, There's something I want you to know, said Dozier, pastor of the Worldwide Christian Center in Pompino Beach. Charlie Crist will be the next governor of the state of Florida, the Lord told him. How do you like that? Man. Since then, Dozier spent time with Crist and talked with him at length about policy. He told the group that Crist would be an uncompromising in his Christian faith. I introduce to you, as the Lord Jesus has said, the next governor of the state of Florida, Charlie Crist, Dozier said. Crist's first words were, Well, as they say, the praise doesn't get any higher, and neither does George. Chief Financial Not Officer later. Tom Gallagher, who's opposing Chris in the primary, wouldn't come out of the remarks after the event. And it goes on and on. Now, let's see. Here's a uh, note at the bottom of this fact. Yeah, that's, that's, the main reason I it. Huh? that's the main reason I sent it, because of the, the little note. It says, I like hearing calls, but not the same pranks over and over. Bring back screen calls at least part of the time. No, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Calls. What, you do think it's a good idea? I'm just uh, busting Josh's chop. Oh, I, I don't care. No, you know, Josh, you'll probably walk out. On the campus of Fun uh, College, where you think that's going to really change something? No. No, of course not. I mean, he'll get rid of it. I mean, he's got certain voices down, that's for sure. No, but that's not the do. point, because they've always got their uh, bunk butt buddies there that's to right. call in, and then over they hand them the instrument. And <laughs> take one or two if, uh, if the equipment works, but of course, uh, and again, it's on your end. Always. I want everybody to understand that. It always is. Isn't that something, huh? Seems to be taking know? place between the students and the local authorities. Who... See, uh, oh, you're playing the uh, Buchanan and Goodman. The flying saucer. I, I, I love was Buchanan. Buchanan I wasn't paying any attention. I was wondering about this phone thing and why it doesn't work. I'm old enough, enough to remember, remember some of this. Up stuff. on your end again, huh? I said I'm old enough to remember some of this. Stuff. Oh, wait a minute. It works now. QAM. Yeah, yeah, good morning, Neil. Yes, sir. I just wanted to hear my voice on the radio. Thank you. Okay, good. Well, that's, that's <laughs> an improvement, though. We'll take that. Crank it up real loud, man. See if you get those good vibrations. That was good. That was a different. Somebody different, anyway. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's enough for right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick up from that thing yesterday. Fabulous 57. Right spot on your dial. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. Oh, drop it. Fabulous 57. Right spot on your dial. 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 Right spot on your dial.
Let your love drive a man insane. You broke my will, but what a free. Great balls of fire. A radio station where things just don't work, man. It just uh, well, sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't, and sometimes it's just as well. That's right. Tune in. We might surprise you. That's right. Tune in. Another, another reason to be tuning in every day, like they used to say on SUN those days. Check back with us later, you know, as if to say, well, we know you don't like whatever's on right now, but check back with us later. Maybe there'll be something on you like then when you hear those needle tapes for the 18th time that day. You know, I, I'm I'm really distraught because I've been I went several days without reading Bob Lasseter's blog. You know, mm -hmm. and then today it's like a soap opera. You know, you figure you'll catch up. And so I read today, and I guess yesterday or a couple of days ago, he had written what he thought was going to be the last um, entry on there, and then he let people respond, which he's been doing once a month. You know, their comments, and um, he's in very bad shape, which I'm very sorry to hear. And I, you know, I've been emailing back and forth, not for a while now, but you know, for a while there we were emailing, talked on the phone once or twice. And I don't know what to say, you know. He, he reached the point where you'd like to email, but... And I read all the other messages from some of the uh, his listeners over the years. Mm -hmm. And some of the messages are fine, and some of them are, well, you know, the Lord this, and even though they know that he's an atheist like I am and don't want any part of oh. the religious crap, they, they just insist on foisting it upon they, him. They, you know? they really do. They think that the closer you are to death, you'll come around. Yeah, oh, exactly right. Well, I'm not, you know, I don't want to say closer to death because that sounds awfully fine. But I just, I wish him the best. And I, I probably will send him a message later on, but it's just uh, sad. Mm -hmm. Really tragic. But it happens to the uh, best of us, you know. It happens to all of us. It's this epidemic. Sooner or later, it's going around. You know? Just sometimes too soon. 20 till 11 at 560 WQAM at the Melting Pod. Man, this isn't just another meal, man. This isn't another hamburger joint or steakhouse. This is an incredibly unique place. Fondue is a memorable four-course dining experience at the pot, where it can really dip into something different and delicious. At the Melting Pot, you'll enjoy a variety of unique entrees and special Melting Pot dipping sauces. That's the key, man, is those sauces. Imagine starting dinner with a Melting Pot's renowned cheese fondue served with three different breads, Granny Smith apples, and crisp veggies. Next, your choice is salads, all with the Melting Pot's homemade dressings. Entrees include lobster, filet mignon, shrimp, Cajun seasoned chicken, pork, portobello, shrooms, duck, and lots more cooked in oil or broth. And those melting pot dipping sauces, like I said, are really spectacular. For dessert, beyond spectacular. They haven't invented a word in the English language to describe just how good those desserts are. The chocolate fondue is beyond description, like I said. Dip all your fruits in there, man. Your fresh strawberries, bananas. Stick your banana in there, your pineapple. And your cheesecake brownies topped off with tasty marshmallows rolled in crushed Oreos and graham crackers. The melting pot for something delicious, different, and affordable, too. Take the whole gang out there real soon. You'll find them all over town now. There's a melting pot in Kendall, Cooper City, North Miami Beach, Boca, Coral Springs, and most prestigious, Fort Lauderdale. This is Neil Rogers. Oi! This is 560 QAM. The Vatican is upset, a boycott is their big threat, cause they think it's a low. They claim that Ron Howard's new flick is bogus, an anti-Catholic angry at Da Vinci Code. Absolutely. But the controversy's groovy, it's just a little movie, don't have an episode. They're ticked off more than a smidgen It debunks their whole religion Angry at Da Vinci Code Damn wrong They paid the clone They just can't stand this guy They're angry and I'll tell you the reason why They say it's a lie Just like James Fry When you go to buy your ticket You may see people pick it on the side of the road. But not everyone's agreeing, millions of folks will be seeing Tom Hanks in Da Vinci Code. 1046, 14 before 11 at 560 WQM. Let's get down to it, okay? Ah, I told you there'd be no more phlegm today, didn't I? Getting close to the end of that, though. I think if I get a good enough machine today, I'll like, um, drain all the phlegm out of my neck. The ringing and clanging of slots, speaking of that, is likely to be heard in Broward by Labor Day. Like I told Humphrey, this is so... Uh, so sad. So slow, like everything else in Florida, man. Oh, good stuff is coming if you live long enough. It's coming, but uh, don't hold your breath. <coughs> mm, look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Magenta. I think that's my first magenta phlegm in history. Officials, well, good old Yenta deserves to uh, ha ha hock up a, a magenta, don't you think? Oh, yeah, I forgot to play this. It's the home of the hits. Rolling up the guy. On 
So there's something small to you about it. Please sing a good song with a nice jingle. What do you think? Absolutely. That's enough. Officials from Hallandale Beach's Mardi Gras Race Track and Gaming Center, which is a, a Hollywood dog track, and Gulfstream Park said yesterday they're ready to push ahead with licensing applications, even as the state puts the finishing touches on machine regulations. The finishing touches. They're touching it as slowly as they possibly can. Pompano Park Harness, which is undergoing a $140 million renovation, hopes to get its 1,500 machines operating by early next year. I'm ready to go, said Dan Atkins, vice president of Mardi Gras, which used to be a Hollywood Greyhound, who led the drive to bring slot machines to Florida. This has been six long years, and I'm now getting excited. Next week, all my documentation will be ready to apply for a license. The State Division of Paramutual Wagering yesterday held the final public hearing on how to regulate the new gaming centers. A room full of paramutual and gambling executives, lobbyists, and representatives from slot machine manufacturers spent hours reviewing more than 100 pages of regulations expected to be in place by late June. The rules can be contested by anyone during the next 10 days. If they are challenged, they'll take effect 21 days later. We try to craft the rules in the best way to protect the citizens, the patrons, and enable the paramutuals to operate in a fair manner, said David Roberts, director of the paramutual division, who's putting the rules together. The state law adopted by the legislature in December allows each paramutual in the county to install up to 1,500 machines, Mon. The revenue from those slots will be taxed at 50%, the highest rate in the nation, for an expected windfall of $209 million the first full year of operation. The windfall could be much, much higher, except, well, um, nevertheless. They're just cutting down on the number of machines, and they're cutting down, you can't do this and you can't do that, can't serve drinks, can't uh, have the ATM. The legislature mandated that the division develop regulations by early July or give Broward's four prayer mutuals temporary licenses to begin operating. If the state's rules are challenged, the temporary licenses will be issued. While the state can take up to 90 days to process license applications, agency officials said it's usually done in less time. Atkins said he could have the new gaming up and running by late August. If there are no holdups in either his application or licensing of the slot machine manufacturers by the state, there appears to be no construction activity at Dania High Lie. Steve Snyder, the Paramutual's president, gave no indication of when he plans to apply for a license or start slot operations. Why would that be? I wonder what that's all about. Workers at Gulfstream and Mardi Gras are hammering away at rooms that will house their slot machines. At Pompano Park, large tractors are digging up sand and dirt as they prepare for a 157,000 square foot racino, kind of like Woodbine. Steel beams and construction material had been sitting in the parking lot for so long, waiting for the state to come up with regulations, that track officials began getting questions from patrons about it. The stuff has been sitting there since May of last year, said Dick Feinberg, the park's general manager. We decided to have a little fun. Signs have gone up with large red letters declaring future site for world's largest Lego building and Racino construction coming soon. Recently, the materials have been moved around. Our contractor said that hopefully by the end of next week there will be the beginnings of some steel going up in the air, Feinberg said. They're going up in the air. Kind of like most of the horses that Dave Ingraham drives. They're going up in the air. Oh, they jumped it off again. I'll be damned. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look at that poll so far. This is one of the most important scientific polls we probably ever take when we do this. How many times have we done this poll before? About 30, man. Uh, and probably, if nothing else, this does accomplish one thing, and that is it lets some of these jackasses cool their heels for a while, cool their, cool their phones off. <laughs> give it a rest? Yeah, give it, exactly. I couldn't put it better myself. Give it a freaking rest. 825 votes. Oh, and by the way, we will make 1,000 by 1230. Aren't you proud of us? Yeah. Now, what, so what's the story? Did Clarence come back in here and say yeah, it's all set? not come back yet, so... I'm well, why not? On the edge of my seat. Maybe they're, uh, you know... I think I should be patted on the back and probably given an extra 50 grand or something just, just for being such a hell of a nice guy to go along with him. Or at least we ought to... The three of us ought to divvy up whatever cash is coming in from that uh, sale. You know, you're from right. that remote. Huh? Right. We ought to be able to skim the cream. For Christ's sakes. So ought to have a little something to stick in our freezer. Just enough to wet our beak. Right. 825 votes. Uh, 831. Oh, they're coming in at big, gigantic, juicy chunks now. If Neil stops taking calls, I'll listen to them. And by the way, the guy that called today, the one, right. if you <laughs> listen to yourself on the radio and you thought you sounded pretty good, call us back tomorrow. Maybe we'll give you the two to four slot. <laughs> if, if Neil, well, we got to find out how, what he thinks. If Neil stops taking calls, I'll listen to the same, 373. 44.8%. Damn near 45%. Damn near half. The callers suck, 117. There's another 14%. Now we're almost up to 60%. I'll kill myself, 74, because... I have no life. Those are the callers, 74. Those are the, and, of course, 74 means each one of them has voted about 10 times. Right. I hate this poll, 65, and I have no idea why. I think it's a fabulous poll. Fabulous. 
I'll listen less, 63. I'll stop listening, 37. How do you like that, Mr. Smarty Pants? Well, bye-bye. Listen, Mar see, I'm not, I've never been one of those people who like, um, in, in, impressed with threats from the audience because I know right. that they're not going to stop listening right. no matter what. Are you threatening me? Yeah, right. Stop listening, 37. Likely story. Listen much less, 31. Kiss the Radio has got... About 30, man. Including George, who probably got some bad infection. Right. He'll, be out, he'll be out sick again next couple of days. I'll listen more, 23, and listen much more, 18. So you put those last three categories together between kissing it. Let's see, 50, that's uh, 6, uh, 8. I mean, you're talking a lot of people who are just grossed out by what uh, has been going on here. And, of course, we're grossed out by this new management team, both the general mangler and uh, the sales mangler, who are just, like, playing fast and loose. Like, this is some kind of a play toy. Like, they just went to uh, Lionel Playworld. They got a brand-new toy, and they're, like, uh, diddling around with it. Don't you get that impression? You know, I, miss, sure. I miss Lionel Playworld. Oh, do you? That was a good shot. Boy, I, I don't know what the hell these people are thinking, and I use that term very loosely. Less than half of Americans are satisfied with 9-11 investigations. According to a new Zogby poll, less than half of Americans are convinced that the events of 9-11 have been thoroughly investigated, Ross Story has learned. In the telephone survey of 1,200 individuals, just 47% agreed that the 9-11 attacks were thoroughly investigated and that uh, any speculation about U.S. government involvement is nonsense. Almost as many, 45% indicated they were more likely to agree that so many unanswered questions about 9-11 remain that Congress or an international tribunal should reinvestigate the attacks, including whether any U.S. government officials consciously allowed or helped facilitate their success. I think that last uh -huh. sentence there needs to be read again. 45% indicated they were more likely to agree that so many unanswered questions about 9-11 remain that Congress or an international tribunal should reinvestigate the attacks, including whether any U.S. government officials consciously allowed or helped facilitate their success. This poll is the first survey that's attempted to gauge the level of American doubts about 9-11 and was carried out for the 9-11 Revealing the Truth Reclaiming Our Future conference to be held in Chicago in June. Not surprisingly, Republicans as a group we're the most supportive of existing investigations because they're a bunch of idiots and a bunch of bush lickers, with 70% expressing their satisfaction, about the same percentage that is expressed approval of Bush's performance in recent polls. 64% of those earning over 75 grand were also skeptical of doubts about 9-11. Should I read that sentence again? 64%, oh, I see, uh, were skeptical of doubts about 9-11. The group's most likely, well, that's because those are the Republicans. The groups most likely to want the attacks reinvestigated were Hispanics at 67% and African Americans at 64%. Dark folks. Other groups also skewed one way or another, but with the majority position generally not above 58%. Overall, the breakdown on a question closely followed the usual political divisions in the country. Republicans again versus Democrats and independents, whites versus minorities, the wealthier and better educated versus the poor and less educated, people over 50 uh, versus those under 50, men versus women. This rough balance in opinions is itself a striking finding. It suggests that doubts about the official accounts of 9-11, far from representing an extreme fringe position, have become a standard component of anti-establishment attitudes. When asked specifically if they thought there had been a government cover-up of evidence that contradicts the official story, the results were again not far from an even split, with 48% rejecting the idea of a deliberate cover-up cover and 42% supporting it. Belief in a cover-up was the majority position among Democrats and among 18- to 29-year-olds and a few other groups. You see that? 18- to 29-year-olds. I see. Young people don't believe in the government. You know what? They uh, got their thumb on it. Finally. Not, of course, that they vote or get involved or do anything about it, but nevertheless, they're busy, you know, smoking a lot of big fat ones and getting laid. And who the hell can blame them? Especially with all this Iran business coming up pretty soon, you know? That uh, June surprise, the Julio surprise, the October, whatever it's going to be. It's going to be some kind of a surprise. And it won't be a surprise. 853 votes, man. We'll have that thousand easy by 12:30 by the time for the pregame show. We've got the unctuous Dave Van Boring and Roxy Foxy Bernstein, who's got that Geldy Sound Like deal going. We got them with the broadcast from out there at PP Park. And I checked the weather forecast, and it says uh, on my thing, no rain, at least very very minimal chance of rain. Now, did you look out the window? It said cloudy. Oh, hey, look out the wall. Huh? Yeah, look out that window there by the wall. Oh, look at that. It's a wall. Yeah. Are you looking at it? Did Clarence come back in there and say you're good to go on Monday and you can leave the you yet. guys at noon? Huh? Not yet. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If we get any flack from Todd Dreck, we're trying. We're bending over backward. In fact, we're going to all need a group uh, chiropractor on Monday to try to cooperate and help them put some swill on here so they can make some cash. They can rape some poor, unsuspecting sponsor out there and put rock solid that on here from noon to four. Good God. Hey, if you have a business and need to get customers away from the competition, then I got the perfect business partner for you. Pubset Printing and Design. 
PubSet can design and print everything you need in your arsenal. Hey, just look at the display booth they made about me. It's on our website right down there at the bottom where I belong. Or see even more of their phenomenal work at PubSetSF.com. PubSet can print everything from business cards to banners, posters to their specialties, trade show booths, and displays. PubSet design and printing the very best for over 14 years now, and PubSet can handle it all in-house, too. Call them at <coughs> 954-772-7275. That's 954-772-7275. Better yet, take a look at all their great stuff on a line at PubSetSF.com. Look your best and get those new customers. It's your business, and it's PubSet's business to make you look as good as possible. Call 954 954- 772-7275 or go to PubSetSF.com like I say. And look for my picture on their building on Dixie Highway, just north of Commercial. You'll damn near drive off the road. Choose the very best PubSet printing and design. Call 954-772-7275 today. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. This is the Neil Rogers Show. This is your brain. Any questions? One, two, three, four, more bombs drop. Five, six, seven, eight, more bombs drop. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, more bombs drop. We're going to drop the bombs around the clock. We're going to drop them bombs and make them dead. Blow that drag right off their heads. We're going to bomb around the clock tonight. We're going to bomb, 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 knock out their lights. We're going to bomb, going to bomb around the clock tonight. Here's a real gun bomb, so have a blast. We're gonna shove that all up your ass. We're gonna bomb around the clock tonight. We're gonna bomb, 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 knock out their lights. We're gonna bomb, gonna bomb around the clock tonight. Well, it's one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready. Now, go, cat, go, but don't you step on my blue street shoes. All right. You can do anything you want off my blue street shoes. Poor Carl Perkins, man. He never got his due, you know. Went yep. to his grave always in the shadow of Elvis. But then he had a lot of company, you know. Right. And Elvis, he sure uh, ripped that off. And he's ripped a lot of stuff off. But then yes, a did. lot of uh, the Beatles ripped a lot of stuff off, too. Right? Right. So I guess it goes with the two. Well, I mean, they did some covers, but... Nah, yeah, it's a rip-off, a man. Couple. It's a rip-off. If somebody else does it, it's a rip-off. If the Beatles did it, it was a cover, okay? I think no, it was if a anybody cover does it, a, a cover is when you, you know... Like yeah, I know what it is. I know exactly what it is. It's like when Rick Nelson recorded I'm Walking and Fat Stomino wanted to give that white boy what for. That's right. What for? I got a Lou Dobbs column here. Do I dare read it? That's funny. Somebody Lou? just faxed over a Lou Dobbs story. Just You said that. That's so weird. I sure hope it doesn't say Bush and Congress tell working folk to go to hell. It says Dobbs, Bush, Congress tell working folks to go to hell. Well, I got it in my hand right now in the story, too. I don't <laughs> like that. I am so far ahead of you people, man. A horse is down the road, and you're just uh, cleaning up his load that he left behind. President Bush, this is Lou Dobbs, your fat-faced hero on CNN. President Bush says that the installation of, uh, we forgot to watch, uh, what's his name this morning? Yes, we did. What's Keith Olbermann. Well, we'll get we'll get in the habit. We don't want to turn it on too early because then we'll see Imus. President Bush says that the installation of the new Iraqi government was a watershed event, but at the same time warns Americans of the challenges and losses we continue to prosecute the war against the Iraqi insurgents. Senator Harry Reid declares that legislation would render English the national language as racist. Thirty-seven Democrats vote for full amnesty for all illegal aliens in this country, even though nobody really knows whether the number is 11 million, 12 million, or 20 million, or maybe even... About 30, man! The Senate Republican leadership demands that a comprehensive immigration reform plan must be passed before this Memorial Day weekend, and the president signs into law a tax cut that raises tax on the educational funds of teenagers saving for college. Never before in our country's history have both the president and Congress been so out of touch with most Americans. 
Never before have so few of our elected officials and corporate leaders been less willing to commit to the national interest. And never before has our nation's largest constituent group, some 200 million middle-class um, middle Americans, 200 million, like I said, been without representation in our nation's capital, says Lou Dobbs. George W. Bush's approval ratings have slumped to the lowest of his presidency. The approval rating for Congress is even lower, and nearly three-quarters of Americans believe the country's headed in the wrong direction. Absolutely. But what's our government doing about that? It's kind of like a QAM. Nothing. <clears throat> the president is staying the course in Iraq and apparently demanding little of his generals to create a new, far more effective strategy for urgent success. Of course, he also wants a guest worker program and amnesty for millions of illegal aliens. And Congress, faced with midterm elections in just over five months, is intent on giving the president what he wants and telling working men and women and their families, American citizens all, to go to hell. Illegal aliens are more important to this Congress than securing our borders and our ports, more important than those legal immigrants who have waited in line and who follow the law. Yeah. The Senate has added to the litany of lunacy that makes up what it calls reform. Illegal aliens will only have to pay back taxes on three of the past five years. They will not be prosecuted for felonies such as identity theft or purchasing or using fraudulent social security cards. And unlike millions of visa holders who have to leave their country to have them renewed, they may simply remain in the U.S. while this Congress and the President give away all the benefits and privileges of American citizenship. This is an outright assault in the elitist war on the middle class. And working men and women who've already become the who've already borne the pain of losing good-paying manufacturing jobs and having middle-class jobs outsourced to cheap foreign labor markets are faced with the onslaught of more illegal immigration and cheap labor into the American economy. This president and Congress talk about bringing illegal aliens out of the shadows while they turn out the lights on our middle class. President Bush and his most trusted advisors tell us how well our economy is doing, how many jobs have been created, and how so-called free trade will enrich the lives of the same people whose livelihoods these policies are destroying. It's not hard to think of the trusted advisor to Catherine the Great, who sought to hide from her the embarrassing and shoddy condition of Ukrainian and Crimean villages by having elaborate facades built to divert her attention and to mask an uncomfortable reality. I don't know whether Karl Rove is President Bush's Grigory Potemkin or whether George Bush has created Potemkin villages all by himself, but the facades are cracking and phony fronts of failed policies are quickly crumbling. 6,000 unarmed National Guardsmen working as adjunct rear support to our undermanned, under-equipped Border Patrol is not border security. Three million illegal aliens continue to cross our borders and depress wages by hundreds of billions of dollars every year. The millions of manufacturing and middle-class jobs lost over the last five years have been replaced by lower-wage employment. The president's faith-based commitment to so-called free trade will lead, likely lead to a $1 trillion U.S. current account deficit this year and a trade deficit of $4.5 trillion after 30 years of trade deficit. About 30, man! And while the president and Congress point to No Child Left Behind as a solution to our educational crisis, we're failing an entire generation of Americans whose test scores continue to fall and whose high school dropout rates would be embarrassing to a third-world country. And a third world country is what we will be if our elected officials don't soon come to their senses. That's your hero, Lou Dobbs, what he writes. You go, Lou. <laughs> and I had it. I just printed that baby out, had it in my hand before that fax, uh, before you even had a chance to send me just the facts. Keep trying to tell these people that you're on top of it, but they won't. I'm on it. top of it, baby. I'm on top of old Smokey, man. Who did that song, On Top of Old? And then it was also On Top of Spaghetti. Right. I'd rather be on, on top, top of, of that. cheese. I think I'm allergic to that uh, pasta, by the way. Really? I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go about a week or ten days and just not have any and see if that, uh, I'm, I'm beginning right. to think I might be. Well, no, because the foods that you crave, they've always said this, the foods that you crave are the foods you're allergic to. And ever since I was like uh, long ago, a hundred yeah. years ago when I was young. Who says that? Pot. They. I want to smack, they, smack them in they, the mouth. Well, they. I don't care. Well, go ahead and smack them in the mouth. You're just trying to rationalize your own aberrant behavior. That's right. Pasta and uh, ice cream. Those are the two things I'm allergic to. Going back, you know when that goes back to especially 1975, WGNO West Palm Beach. After I lost 100 pounds, I lost 100 pounds in oh I don't know about a year. I went from 266 to 170. Okay, so assuming wow. it's only what 96 pounds, huh? What a tub! Oh, I, I was oh I was big as a house. I was as big as an apartment. I, I was almost well no, I was about half as big as Fat Boy. That's oh, big. I'm gonna say, don't go crazy. No. By the way, Troy Stratford said he and Fat Boy are gonna be next. I think that Brett and Todd Dreck ought to be next. If, if I get to vote, those would be the two I vote for. Because Brett's a total idiot, and Todd is, oh, my God. Can you, even, can you even believe what a shameless piece of turd he is? I've stepped on better things than him. I believe it. And had to throw my shoes out. 895 vote already. Man, we're going to have that 1,000 before we uh, shake of a lamb's tail. I wonder where that expression came from. Probably at Michigan State. I don't know. There's a dictionary for things like that. If Neil stops taking calls, I'll listen the same. 406. 45.3%. See that? I see it. If I stop taking calls. Now, we'll never, I mean, you know, we did that seven months and didn't take any calls. I'm not going to go, I'm going to go, not going to go that crazy. 
And, of course, you win. You're on. You know, the calls to you are a crutch. Right. And, of course, a crutch that generally falls out from under your armpit. And That's right. Less. Wobbly you coming, rubber crutch. You keep coming back for, for more. The callers suck, 126. So you put those two together, you got almost 60% right there. Holy moly, rat man. There's almost 60% right there. I'll kill myself, 76. Those, of course, are the people who, uh, this is their outlet. This is their reaching out to the human race, uh, the subhuman race. I hate this poll, 70. I'll listen less, 59, uh, 69. Stop listening, 39. 4.3% will stop listening. Well, we'll survive without you. Have a great life. I'll listen much less, 33. I'll kiss the radio, 31. I'll kiss it, as Bubba would say. I'll listen more, 24. And I'll listen much more, much, 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 much more, 21. Thank you, Uno. You impressed? Yeah. 900 votes. Well, what do you mean by that? Oh, yeah. Well, this is a, this is a far cry from what it used to be. And, of course, this is part of the evolutionary process, man. That you go through. If you're gonna if you're gonna survive in this business, I'm gonna tell you right now, you can't just keep coming on and doing the same old crap day after day. You know, it'll fly for a while, but then you gotta like say, Hey, wait a minute, just like those boring guests I used to put on here, I wanna apologize again, not to the audience, but to myself. I could do better than that. The crap that I used to put on the air on W Snooze and, and in fact my first guest, my good close personal buddy Sid Levin, I love you, Sid, but I got news for you, man. When, see I inherited the guest that Dick Syed, my predecessor who got canned to K E T. I inherited the guest that he had lined up. So my very first guest was Garrett Sloan, who was the director of the Dade County Sewer and Water Authority. Now, and I don't have to look that up anymore. It's just it's in my mind. That's 30 years ago. About 30, man. That was my first guest. Now, what would you talk to the director of the Dade Sewer and Water Authority about? Crap. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. How, I mean, what, what was that show? What was that? <laughs> and then all the chiropractors and the nutritionists and the religionists and the fakers and the shakers and the Quakers. That was really, I mean, in its time, I guess it was okay, you know, it did all right. But generally speaking, I was babysitting for people, you know, 90 plus, death plus 10. I was a babysitter for old farts, for hostile, and that's why when all of a sudden I started ripping the old farts, that's why, boy, they sure turned on me like a cornered rat. Imagine that's that. why the whole audience turned around at that point. When I talked about these early birds and this cheapness and this yenta factor and opening your neighbor's mail and just being miserable <laughs> and hateful and not wanting anybody at the age of 100 to live in your complex. And if it was your grandkids who would come and rip the place apart, it was okay. But if it was somebody else who had kids, you wanted to kick their ass out. All of these things. Nothing has changed. It's still the same. Oh, you're just making that stuff up. That's why no matter how old I get, and believe me, I'm old. I, mean, I, I could never even relate to that crowd. Oh, I've got to admit to you one thing. Okay. As as life goes on, like when I'm at Woodbine, I'll see some of these, you know, people in their 70s or 80s. I don't know how. As you get older, it's harder to tell how old people are. Okay. When I was younger, I had a better uh, grasp on that. And I think to myself, okay, well, maybe that guy's like 72. Am I going to be like that in nine years? <laughs> you know what I mean? What, like crotchety or decrepit? <laughs> Both. Just a real miserable old fart. 11.13 at 5.60. WQM, we got that Marlin pregame at 12.30. Don't say we didn't warn you. Hey, all you horse racing fans and poker players, Pompano Park Racing and Poker's got the gambling action you want. And those slots starting uh, sometime. Located just about a half mile from both I-95 and the Turnpike, Pompano Park is easy to get to. And best of all, Pompano Park features free admission and free general parking every single day of your life. Live harness racing in the smoke-free poker room is open every Wednesday, like today, Friday and Saturday. Poker gets underway at noon, about 45 minutes, goes on till midnight. And live racing gets underway nightly at 725, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, like tonight. The poker room also features tournament play all day and all night. And don't miss out on dollar night Wednesdays like tonight. That's when draft beer, sodas, hot dogs, and lots more are just a buck apiece starting at 6 in the p.m. Come out and enjoy a fabulous meal in Patton's Place on the fifth floor. You can choose from the Chef's Nightly Special, a great T-bone steak, or maybe a giant burger or a chicken sandwich. That's chicken, Rick. That was great talking with the Hank about Rick Weaver and that chicken thing. You'll find that there somewhere. We got somewhere. it somewhere. Or maybe we had to throw it out. The hell is that? Huh? Do you hear that? Do I hear what? Okay, I guess not. No, I don't hear anything. All right. What, were you playing it? No, no, there was some disconnection sounds going on. What are you talking about? Like, click, click, click. Well, click this. Pompano Park is also open seven days and nights a week, featuring the best in harness, thoroughbred highlight action from all across North America. If you can watch him plunge your guts on. Don't forget, Brian Sears is a living god. Pompano Park, a block south of Atlantic Boulevard on Powerline Road. For the current racing schedule, go online at pompanopark.com or call 954-972-2000. And be sure and compliment Dick Feinberg on those Hawaiian shirts. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. This is Larry King, and they don't come any better than Neil Rogers. Ooh, the mafioso guys, the manly guys, please don't tell me now there's a gay soprano. Ooh, you don't know where he's been, embarrassing. The network has to introduce a gay soprano. Never gonna stop, give it up, stop the life of crime, boy.
You know, with all due respect, I don't want to pick on dead people, but I think that's a really good poll. I'm going to make a note of that right now. I don't want to forget it. What's that? It's a good poll idea. Uh, people who uh, became highly overrated after their death. Like Elvis? Yeah. Oh, well, he was overrated before his death. But still. So, in other words, yes or no? Uh, well, why not, why not? not? Like Marilyn I'm Monroe? I'm doing that poll right now. We got the one for tomorrow, thanks to one of our listeners. Eric's already got it, I hope. After their death. Uh, Buddy Holly. I mean, you know, he was okay. He was good. That was a, that no, was that a good, good poll. That's a good idea. He had Peggy Sue. He had Old Boy. And he had uh, that one. Then he died, you know. But uh, right. his music was fine. I you know, no problem with him. In fact, that sounds like that'll be the day again. That's what I just said. But, uh, and then, like, uh, Richie Valens, another one that you hate like poison. La sure. Bamba. Right. Huh? As a matter of fact, speaking of Richie Valens, it wouldn't surprise me. Oh. Uh-oh. How do you like that? That's probably what I was thinking about for Richie. Don't get on the plane with Captain Harris, Richie. Don't get on now, let's see. Was Richie Valens, he was on the same plane with Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper. Am I correct that about that? That is correct. Huh? Yes. Okay. And Catherine Harris. Right. You could put, uh, what's it, James Dean on that poll. Oh, okay. Let's see. Buddy Holly. I, I don't want to be building that poll right now. I'm trying to do a, a brief radio show here before I go off to uh, plunge my guts out. Elvis. Uh, Marilyn who Monroe. Who else did we say? Marilyn. Richie Valens. Who? Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. James Dean. Well, that's going to be a long list. People who all of a sudden became uh, much more um, highly overrated after they died. Anyway, look for the QM van right now at the Hooters parking lot on Pines and University to pick up a pair of free tickets to this afternoon's Marlin Cup game at the stadium. There ought to be one fantastic crowd. Man, are you going to have a blast with that crowd today at the old ballpark? How many people do you think are going to be there for an afternoon game? About 30, man. Uh, huh? Surprise everybody, man. The Marlins are going for a clean sweep against those awful Cubs. Boy, the Cubs must really be awful, awful bad. First John. of the year sweep, if they make it happen. You think that's going to happen? Uh, probably not. Or, now, why do you say that? You have such little Well, considering on all the games they've won this year, I would say it's not a good odds that they, they sweep. They kick their ass on Monday, baby. The Marlins win. Marlins win. Marlins win. Give me another beer. Exactly. And he won, what was it, 5-4 last night? Was that the final score, 5-4? I believe so. That was also the final score in a hockey game last night. Edmonton 5 and Anaheim Mighty Ducks 4. That was one of the that was one of the most uh, scintillating third periods I've seen in many many a year. That was great hockey, boy. That was good. It always it always cracks me up every morning when Hank expects me to start you know hyperventilating about Shaq and the Heat. I don't I don't care about it. Even if I tried, unless somebody paid me a lot of money, I can't pretend to care about something that I don't, including that crap. Freak it's freak ball. You know all these seven foot guys slam a jam and you know and pretty soon I have ten foot guys. You know who, whose head will come up to the top of the basket, whose head will be right at the rim. If I can say that, can I say that? No. Who said it'll be right at the... Mm-hmm. F- it's, just, it's just ridiculous. It, it, it's basically almost... It's like a step away from the WWF what goes on. In addition to which, if, if you really watch the NBA, and I have watched like a few seconds here and there, the, the traveling that goes on now, I mean, they take like six giant steps. And how many steps do you have to take before it's called for... Uh, About 30, man. You, know? you still know what I'm saying, Josh? Yeah, it's three, but for Shaq, it's six. Yeah, he can take six giant steps because he's a monster in the... Uh, bat, bat. Plus, yeah, I think he wears that icy sleeve. 925 votes on the poll. If Neil stops taking calls, I'll listen to the same 418. Well, let's just see for the heck of it. WQAM, hello. Mr. Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, how are you? For, for the good. little poll that you're working on for overrated after death, don't forget to put uh, Ronald Reagan on that poll. Oh, yeah, good one. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Excellent, thank you. See? Well, how do you like I that? you might have a point. That, see, was that a good one? Yes, we are four for four. Now, you might say, well, I kind of called earlier. No, he was good. No, he was just fine. It was good. He, he was honest. He admitted he wanted to hear what he sounded like on the radio. By the way, don't forget, pal, call me back tomorrow morning. If you think you sounded okay, we'll, we'll give you a two to four slot. Not every day. We're, you know, we're still auditioning till about July next year. How long do you think this Clarabelle the Clown, how, how, do you, how long do you think his deal is? You see, basically, I just I give up because, you know, Norma Kent, I guess since I sent the money, I guess that's the end of that, you know. Yeah, it's like, it's like feeding, yeah. feeding the dog. You won't see it for a while. That, that's right. He's got his cash now, so he's out there uh, cruising the uh, boulevard or whatever he's doing, and I won't see him for a while, <clears throat> looking for runaways. I have no idea what he's doing, and and and, uh, and that's it. And Clarabelle, he don't, you know, he doesn't even darken our door anymore lately. Am I right or am I wrong? Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I was uh, trying to get a song going here since you mentioned it. Now, didn't we just play that yesterday, Del Shannon? Can you hear it enough? Oh, 
Anyway, did I never give you the result on that poll, but I stuck that other call in there. It was excellent. It was a good one for that poll that we're going to take probably sneaky. on uh, Friday. If Neil stops taking calls, I'll listen the same as always. Not 420, 40, over 45% now, 45.2. Bless your soul. Oh, and they're starting again with this bird flu thing. They're starting to get everybody whipped up. Just after the yesterday when I said there's never been one case of human to human, which there has not. And now, oh, a question mark. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Anderson Pooper, did Jesus Christ exist at Da Vinci Code? Who knows and who cares? You know, another Getschke. Oh, the collars suck 134. That's 14.4%. So right there, like I said, that's 60%. Right there. Right from the get-go, as they say. Is that what they say? You know what they, they say? say. Get-go is say a lot of things. I'll kill myself, 79. I have no life. I hate this poll, 73. I'll listen less, 72. I'll stop listening, 39. Damn it, 4.1%. Do you believe me? No. I'll listen much less, 33, 3.5%. Because I want to hear those really nifty callers. <sighs> See, the, the, you know, the, the amusing part of it is that I put these on there to give people an outlet, you know, like a place to go. But if they really think that I believe that, it's just, even, <laughs> even I can't be that stupid. I'll kiss the radio, 32. I'll listen more, 25. Listen much more, 22. I should have also put I'll listen much, 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 much more, more, shouldn't I? Right. No. We already got 929. By noon, we'll have that thousand. We'll have it licked. Aren't you impressed? I know you're not moderately impressed, but I'm moderately impressed. I bet you Josh is just blown away by it. I am shocked. <clears throat> yeah. See, you think that on these days, when we, and you want to know why? Because the, what the audience does, because we have a very large, forget about the callers. I'm talking about the listeners, the normal people, <clears throat> or at least some of them. What they do on the days when we have the ball game is they listen a lot more between 10 and 12.30. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They listen much faster, uh, faster, they concentrate much harder, they hang on every word, and they like turn it up like twice as loud to compensate for the right. fact that... Concentrated listening. Yeah. They had Alex Trebek, your buddy, on there before for the National Spelling Bee uh, Contest winner or something like that. See what I tell you about hmm. him. Sued. What? That's and a noble Canadian project. Too. What the hell does he know about American uh, Jeopardy? He's a Canadian. He kind of like Neil Young. Don't you spell well, we the words that, all the same up there? We could play that twice, Neil Young, and we could be right up to the ball game. We could play it till we're old. Let's impeach the president. Well, I, I got a head start. You know, sometimes it's the things you can't see that can hurt you. In South Florida for 28 years, Dry Concepts is simply the best at dry cleaning your carpets. That's why I've used them for over 21 years. I know every time they come to my homes, they're going to make those carpets look like I just had brand new laid right on the floor. When you dry clean your carpets, you really can clean today, entertain tonight, because they dry in just a couple of hours instead of being soaking like wet for hours and days like with the other joints. Your carpets stay clean longer. There's no sticky residue left behind. And with over 50,000 satisfied customers, you know you've got plenty of company. People have realized that dry concepts be the best. And don't forget, Dry Concepts are also the experts in water damage restoration. Keep that in mind all during these next several months during the hurricane season. Certified technicians get you out of the mold zone in minutes, not days. And Dry Concepts can get your home or business dry within 70, uh, 24 to 72 hours. It's guaranteed. And to top all of this off, Dry Concepts also has a state-of-the-art oriental rug cleaning plant, the only one in South Florida on-site, dedicated to keeping your expensive area rugs looking just like brand new. So do yourself a humongous favor. Call Dry Concepts today at 1-800-248-5071. What is that number again? 1-800-248-5071. That's for Dave Broward in the Palm Beaches. Or log on to their website, dryconcepts.com. This is Neil Rogers. Yes. This is 560 QAM. Floridians, dumb as dirt. How the heck did Barry's muscles grow? He was a shrimp till he went to Balco. I hit home runs thanks to the juice. It did the trick cause I just beat Babe Ruth. Babe. Beat you, babe. You beat the babe. You beat me illegally. I beat you, don't check my pee. You beat me, you cheating punk. I beat you, you big fat drug. You and me are in different leagues. Well, in your day, that's the way it would be. You beat me with dirty tricks. Just don't give me no asterisk. I beat you, babe. You beat the babe. I beat you, babe. I beat you. Just stay 
Frosted my ass back then, and it frosts my ass even now. I would say 1958. Let me let me look at my disc. <clears throat> oh, it doesn't say on here what year. Not a bitch. But I bet you if I go to the insert, it'll say. <clears throat> don't you think? It must. It, uh, it does. Uh, the diamonds, a little early. 1957. I was close. If you're within one year, close enough. It's okay. But anyway, the original hit on that was by the Gladiolas, which was much much better. Uh, maybe you got that there. I doubt it. I don't. It's too old. I'm gonna go and get it. One of these days soon. Although I have been updating with the uh, the oldies, you know that collection that's back here that's incomplete. People picked through it already. Oldies, but goldies, uh, but goodies, whatever. Yeah. I've been putting them in the computer slowly but surely. Well, I bet you that's on there, but probably, probably the one by the Diamonds, like I just played. Anyway, the Gladiolas had the original hit on that, and it was much much better version. The Diamonds, as you just heard, it's very campy, and it's just uh, you know, it sucks. But they had the bigger hit because the Diamonds were on Mercury Records. I don't know if I've heard the uh, Gladiola mm-hmm. version. You never did? I might have. I I don't know. I'd have to. Hear I'll it. get it. If it's the last damn thing I do, I'm going to go out and get it. All right? I <clears throat> I just sent a message to a blabo there, an email during the break. I just I just feel insufficient. You know, they're, they're, I'm just not good at that kind of thing. I, I don't know if anybody is good at that kind of thing, but it's just uh, unfortunate. 26 right. till noon. And so anybody who is a Lasseter listener or fan, you probably want to check out of the uh, blog the last uh, couple of days and check out what's going on. It's not good. Purported Bin Laden message, Musawi, not part of 9-11. A website message purportedly from Osama bin Laden says that neither Zacharias Musawi or is it Zacharias or is it Zachariah? They pronounce it about eighty different ways. Uh, that Musawi guy with the bald head. Neither him nor any of the prisoners at the U.S. prison in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, had anything to do with the attacks of 9/11. The auto tip message in Arabic included an English translation and subtitles that said "Casa Hoys." Earlier this month, the federal jury sentenced Musawi. Well, we know that. Although he wasn't charged with direct involvement in the plot, prosecutors had sought the death penalty. He didn't get it. He got life in prison with no possibility of parole. Some 500 detainees from the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq are being held at the Gitmo Naval Base. And then, of course, there are also those that... Abu Ghraib. Last month, a complete version of Bin Laden's most recent audio message appeared on Islamist websites four days after experts appear, uh, excerpts appeared on the Arabic-language TV channel Al Jazeera. And it goes on about this and about the cartoons of Mohammed and all this other kakarai, man, all this nonsense. Don't forget, look for the QM van right now at Hooters parking lot at Pines University. Pick up a pair of free tickets for this afternoon's Marlin Cup game at PP Park, man. Lots of elbow room out there, I guarantee you that. And because it's cloudy, even though it's going to be 87, it's not going to be a day you're going to, like, bake and fry in the sun. Is it bacon and frying? I don't know. Probably. Are, are they baking it or frying it? Well, I mean, 87 is pretty damn high. But at least if it's not sunny, it's like you're not going to get just, like, fried and leave with a big tumor. 958 votes. I'm going to tell you right now. Let me just refresh that. And take a look at what the odds are. I mean, the thousands are given. 963, our, our goal right now is $80 million for the charity, and we want to get to 1,000 by noon. Speaking of the charity, we didn't even get 25 grand yet for our about 30, uh, about 30 campaign, man. which is so. Um, there, there are no words to describe it. It's so mortifying and humiliating and degrading. That's the level to which we've stooped here at QAM. In the meantime, everybody from our management to uh, our agents to our. Uh, everybody. They're all like in suspended animation. They're all like frozen. You know, they're like Ted Williams' head. They're all like that cash in Bill Jefferson's freezer. Frozen. I mean, what are we going to do? How are we going to thaw these bastards out? I guess we're not, are we? Take more calls. So did no? We're not going to take more calls. We'll tell you. Well, I'll take a call when I feel good and ready to take calls. Oh, you like know, that. I was kidding. And it ain't going to happen. I know you're kidding, but I, I just it just rub, it, it uh, ruffles my dander, whatever that is. Yeah, my dander. Get your hackles up. Yeah, that's it. That too. My hackles and my. Cackles. At any rate, we got that big ball game coming up. I better uh, get with it here. I better start, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm used to you know, sitting here very um, calmly. But we got a lot of pressure today when you have only this two and a half hours. And wait till Monday, man. You ain't seen nothing yet, like the Blues and the Goose said. <laughs> right. I think I have that here in my collection. We, you ain't seen nothing yet by the Blues and the my Goose. But Monday, you only got two hours, 10 to noon, so you're going to have to be pressure-packed on Monday. You'll have to take a million calls on Monday. And, of course, on Labor Day, you can have a memorial, whatever it is, Memorial Day. There it is. There's the blues and the blues. I'd say 1968 or 9. That's my guess. Seven. 67. See, again, within one year, and the board goes back. 
And he's still talking about grace. Can't hear it, but... That was okay. That was a good time, man. 67 through uh, 70, mid-60s through the 70s. In fact, 50s, 56 to 80. That's when the good music came out. I'm not, okay. Now, obviously, there are some exceptions, few. Oh, guess what I don't have on my iPod? What I did not uh, transfer on there yet and probably won't. And you're going to laugh when I tell you. All right. Well, I sat next to him at Woodbine. Oh, you're, uh, you're guess who? Yeah. Now, you probably never knew a bigger guess who fan than me. I mean, I just love a guess who. Maybe me. Well, there you go. But i got to be honest with you. In fact, uh, when I hear their music playing anywhere now, I just I, I have a different altitude about it. Not that I don't like the music. It's he still sour great. you? But meeting him, and well, I didn't really meet him officially, but I mean, it was him, you know. And having him sit there next to me playing that machine with his young uh, partner there, his daughter, wife, or whoever she was. And his, just his being friend. A, his uh, partner there, or whoever. Uh, he was just a jackass, and that just disturbed me a lot. And that should not have any bearing on whether I like the music. These eyes. But it does. I know I still like the music. I just don't want to hear it for a while. I just need a rest from him, from Burton Cummings. Okay, that's enough. I need a rest. See, you're, you're a sadistic bastard is what you are. No wonder your wife hates you like poison. And is trying to poison your cornflakes. 969 votes. I think we got a shot at that thousand by the top of the hour. When little hand hits the big end, did Clarence ever come back in there and give you the uh, rub down? I mean, the rundown on Monday? No. Well, why not? I, I guess it's got to work its way back through the system. Oh, work its way back through my ass. <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> That'll be the long way. Yeah. Come on. Jesus, Scott. I go along with some cockamamie, a crazy ass idea they got to farm out part of our show Rock solid. because they got money on the table. They got that silly ass Spanglish speaking idiot that's on there in the wee hours of the morning when everybody's still asleep that wants us to do Spanish sports talk. That wants oh, to yeah. hijack part of our show on Monday, and I'm doing it for you guys. Right. I appreciate it. When the phone is ringing right now, which means there's probably a bulk of this down there. You think I'm going to run right down and get it? No. Probably not. There's a delivery. Down. In fact, if I played my cards right and ran down there and got it. By the time I got back, it would be mm -hmm. time for the ball game already. I'm not going to do that, though. I'm, I'm putting my nose to the grindstone. I'm going to succeed in spite of these bastards. Not because of them, but in spite of them. And in spite of him, too. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to win this afternoon just in spite of Burton Cummings and his uh, partner there. Maybe it was there his daughter. Go. I don't know. I don't she know. was awfully young. <laughs> you know, you do that one more time. Yeah. <laughs> You see what I mean, Josh? I just needed to get that on there. Relentless little <laughs> spick, man. Just relentless. He just never lets up. Bop, 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 bop. You're, you're like Rimmer in a different way. Only ten yeah, times for my own annoying. meals. Only ten times more annoying. Hey, let me tell you about your shoes, man. If your feet aren't in good shape, man, you aren't worth a damn. And Brandy Shoes in Pompano Beach is the place to wander with those tootsies. Brandy's carries all the top names in the shoe business like Florsheim, Echo, Mephisto, Rockport, Hush Puppy, New Balance, and tons of other name brands in all sizes for men and women. They even carry wide widths and hard-to-find sizes for those of you out there with real bizarre, strange feet. Maybe like even troglodyte feet. Brandy Shoes is the largest independent shoe retailer in South Florida. When you see the selection and value you get at Brandy's, you'll understand why I've been raving about how great they are for years. And you want to know why? Because they are. They're the best. Go talk to our good buddy Arnie. He'll make damn sure that you get the right-fitting shoes for your feet at the right price every time. Brandy's is open every day, Monday through Saturday till 9, every Sunday till 5. You'll find Brandy's at 1290 North Federal Highway in Pompano Beach between Atlantic and Copas on the east side. You can't miss it. And this week is a stupendous time to buy Sperry Topsiders at Brandy's. Take 10 to 20 bucks off on all great men's and women's styles. So be sure to get your big fat ass into Brandy's shoes this week, or just sit there on a chair and go online. Do your shoe shopping on their website at brandyshoes.com. This is Neil Rogers. Rock solid. This is 560 QAM. Beware of exploding balls. Oh, can you mow all the grass on my lawn? And when you're done there, could you rake out the flower bed? And could you ask your wife when the dishes are done?
I think there's a couple of them like that, but uh, people, songs that are uh, named after the artist. Right. Bo, Bo Diddley by Bo Diddley. Mm -hmm. There's another one. I can't think of what it is. I'll think of it. Oh. Or not. Oh, and also do me a favor. Sure. Because I'm sure you keep track of all these things. Uh, Lasseter's uh, email. Yes. Have you got that? Yes. Because I sent him that message, and I just got that postmaster notification failed to deliver. Hmm. So I must have sent it to the wrong email address because I'm doing it by memory, and I must have been wrong. See if you got it and uh, fax it to me. Don't put it on Okay. Email. Senator Chris Dodd said yesterday he's decided to do all the things that are necessary to prepare to seek the presidency in 2008. Good man, but uh, where was he and all his other fellow senators in so many cases? You know, where were they? A good man, though. Connecticut Democrat will hire staff, raise money, and travel around the country in the next few months as he tries to enlist support. And you don't even know who he is. That's kind of who? scary to me. Chris Dodd. He looks like Jerry Williams, although he's not dead. Like other presidential contenders, Dodd said during a lengthy interview in his Capitol Hill office that he will not formally decide until early next year whether to make his bid official. At the moment, he joins about ten other major Democratic Party figures who are considering a run. Dodd came close to running in 2004 but never entered the race. Circumstances are different today. He's not up for re-election to a Senate seat. And his colleague, Jew Lieberman, is now running for president and has got his own bad fish to fry in a Connecticut. He's got some real service there, luckily. Th thanks, God. Now, if anybody thinks I'm answering that line nine... During this, uh, you know, infrequent phone call thing here, you're dreaming. Hey, look for the QM van right now as I speak. You got a chance to go out to the ball game this afternoon for free. The van is at the Hooters parking lot at Pines and University. Just stop by there, pick up a pair of free tickets to this afternoon's Marlins and Cubs game as the Marlins try to make a sweep and win three in a row. Wouldn't that be a feather of an aircraft, huh? Mm. Wouldn't that be something? I bet you that would go a long way toward building that stadium, don't you think? No, not. The FCC, the unctuous FCC, which has all the power in the world to, uh, you know, fine everybody $80 gazillion if we say crap, has told a Democratic congressman they cannot investigate the National Security Agency's domestic data mining program because it's classified. In a letter to Massachusetts Democrat Ed Markey, FCC chairman, the unctuous Kevin Martin, said the program could not be scrutinized because it was classified. In this case, however, the classified nature of the NSA's activities makes us unable to investigate the alleged violations discussed in your letter at this time, writes Martin. The representations of Director of National Intelligence John Agrippati and NSA Director General Alexander make it clear that it would be not possible for us to investigate the activities described in your letter without examining highly sensitive classified information. The Commission has no power to order the production of classified information. In his response, Markey chastised the FCC for refusing to demand answers. We can't have a situation where the FCC, charged with enforcing the law, won't even begin an investigation of apparent violations of the law because it predicts the administration will roadblock any investigation citing national security, Markey said. If the FCC initiates an investigation and gets blocked by the White House, then the White House is stonewalling. But if the FCC refuses even to demand answers, then the White House never has to block the enforcement agency from getting to the bottom of this. The American people deserve answers, he said, and hold your breath and your mama. How do you like that? I don't. It hasn't taken too long. But the rumors are starting already. Wait till you're this. Hang on to your both sides of your chair with both hands. Get a firm grasp. Oh, well, let me check this thing first over here. Uh-oh. We're going to have that thousand and then some by noon. Are you excited or what? Medium. 995. I'm so excited I got my shirt and pants on. Shoes coming very soon. No socks. Is there trouble in Tomcat land? Can you believe this? Oh, no. Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes reportedly got into a big fight that ended with Holmes deciding to take baby Surrey to Ohio to introduce the two-month-old to family and friends. Tom, who is rumored to have a rocky relationship with Holmes' Holmes's parents, won't be joining them, according to Life and Style Weekly, one of my very favorite publications. He told Katie, did you ever uh, find that email or not? Yes, on its way. Oh, thank you. He told Katie he wasn't going, considering the bad relations between him and her family, an insider told the magazine. Katie was really happy he said that because she'd been afraid to admit him uh, to him that uh, she didn't want him to go. Did you follow that? No, but I'm not going to read it again. 
The couple allegedly had a huge argument, which ended with Katie declaring, I'm doing this and you can't stop me. Her representative denies the story. Cruz reportedly decided to fly his fiance and Tot to Toledo, drop them off, and fly back to pick them up. This episode, however, may be giving Holmes second thoughts. A confidant of hers told the magazine, Katie's very unhappy and beginning to realize she may have made a major mistake. A major mistake being with Tom. Yeah, I could have told her that. Huh? She wouldn't listen to me. How do you like that? For some heavy-duty crap. Well, speaking of crap, wait till you do this. New Delhi. Not the uh, Rascal House or the Delhi Den. New Delhi, India. Some Indian Christians are so incensed with the fictional blockbuster, the Da Vinci Code, they want the government to ban it. And one Roman Catholic has offered a bounty on of, of $25,000 on the head of author Dan Brown. Doesn't this sound awfully familiar? Yeah, like those satanic verses. Right. Leaving other members of the faithful embarrassed by the reaction. The Mumbai Catholic Council has threatened to stop the screening of the movie if the government fails to ban the recently released movie of the book. Another group called the Catholic Social Forum has said that if the shows go ahead, it will launch a death fast from the 12th of May. Well, the 12th of May is like 10 huh. days ago, so maybe they're dead by now. This, this, oh, I see. This article is uh, from the 11th of May, but it just, it just finally made it. Nicholas Almeida, Catholic and former Mumbai uh, Municipal Counselor, offered a reward of $25,000, 1.1 million rupees, for the head of author Brown, leading a Catholic journalist to compare Almeida to the Taliban. Still, the Autonomous Delhi Commission for Minorities joined Christian groups like the All India Christian Council calling for a ban on the movie. The commission said that the Da Vinci Code is sheer blasphemy and that it has deeply upset Christian sentiments in appealing on the 10th of May to the Federal Censor Board to deny screening permission for the movie. In a country like ours where vicious propaganda is used against Christian minorities by Hindu bigots, the movie will be handy for them to tarnish our image. Arnold James, a Church of North India member and Christian representative in the commission, told Ecumenical, uh, another one of my favorite magazines, Ecumenical News International. I never missed that. <laughs> Archbishop Stanislaus Fernandez, Secretary General of the Catholic Bishops Conference of India, said, The fictional work belittles what is at the heart of Christian faith and cherished in Christian life. All of these bubble mice, in a statement objecting to the release of the movie. Every individual has got a right to his religious beliefs and to enjoy the respect. Oh, see, this is wrong. And to enjoy the respect to them from the followers of other religions. No, no, you don't. No. Where, where is that right. written? Sorry. Where did, yeah. How do you like that? See, th this is where they go wrong. This is where they make the bad mistake. Not only do you have to, uh, you know, allow us to believe whatever we want, which we're entitled to do that, but then you have to respect us for believing a bunch no, of no, silly nonsense. No, no, we don't. You're silly, and we're allowed to say so. You're idiots. Oh, see, I, you, thank you very much. Uh, I had the wrong one. Uh, I had yeah. the wrong thing. I've got to system. redo that all over again. What an idiot. Why, why the hell did I delete that? Because I'm, I'm dumb. It's, it's already in your sent mail. Just cut and paste it, man. Will you relax? Just, just calm down. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go put my shoes on in a minute. By the way, it was a UPS package, and it was uh, money due on it. I'm, I'm not too uh -oh, happy Oh, maybe it's more uh, cigars. I'm going to tell you right now, it damn well better not be. <laughs> if, it, if it's... Uh, no comment. <laughs> Thousand and four votes on the poll, man. We better do this break uh, real pronto, Tonto, because we got three of them coming up in the next half hour. By the way, if you got anything uh, busy that you got to do today, or even not, just uh, not be nice knowing you, because the next half hour is all spots radio. If Neil stops taking calls, I'll listen the same as ever. Four hundred and fifty-two, and even forty-five percent. The callers suck. One hundred and forty-four, fourteen point three percent. I'll kill myself. Eighty-six. Promise. I'll listen less. Seventy-eight. I hate this poll. Seventy-six. Stop. I'll stop listening. Forty-four. 4.3% of this audience are PO'd, man. Although we took a couple of calls today. Three, I think, didn't we? Okay. And we still okay. got 35 minutes to go. Never know. We might take another one, but probably not. I'll listen much less, 40. Kiss the radio, 34. Listen more, 27. And listen much more, 23. Vainty Trace. That exciting or what? Okay. 11.55. Don't forget, we got that big Cub Marlin game coming up pregame at 1230 this afternoon. I know I'm not forgetting. I'm on the edge of my seat. Almost out the door. If you're a boat lover and you love being out there in the water, but you just don't have the big bucks to go and buy a boat, and you certainly don't want to go through all the hassle of uh, maintaining one, here's the answer for you. Don't buy one. Do the smarter thing. Call 1-800-BOAT-RENT right now at Club Nautico and rent you a boat. Why pay the expenses of owning a boat when you can rent one totally hassle-free? Join the club at Club Nautico. Call 1-800-BOAT-RENT. You'll be amazed just how easy they make everything for you. There are no docking costs, no expensive upkeep, no insurance, no hurricane preparation. And hurricane season, of course, starts next week already. When you have a boat from Club Nautico, it's totally stress-free and affordable, too. Call 1-800-BOAT-RENT. No getting the boat ready because Club Nautico does it for you. And no cleaning up, either. At Club Nautico, you just hop on your boat, go have a spectacular time. When you're done, pull back into the dock, get off, and just walk away. They do all the rest. It's that simple. 
Club Nautico, call 1-800-BOAT-RENT from unlimited boating to pay-as-you-go, from small boats to yacht charters and everything in between. All of these things. It's Club Nautico. Call 1-800-BOAT-RENT or let Club Nautico tailor a plan to fit your needs and your budget, too. Get on the water today the hassle-free, the inexpensive way with Club Nautico. Call them at 1-800-BOAT-RENT. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Steve Goldstein, but you can call me Geldy. Whenever I'm in town, I listen to... Wait a minute, I am in town. It's the 12 to 1 hour. Stop! And see that woman that fuck around there with that big stick. These shoes! And the pants are... For a goal. Hi, everybody. Not with me. I'm the voice of the pants. Hey, how you doing up there in Boca, Mo? Fixing the paladins off your feet, huh? Told you I'd get your time slot. <laughs> now I'm going to change the face of Budget Conscious Sport Hole Radio. Starting with an interview with a generic sport hole spokesman. I don't like the fire under the ass entertainment. Now, don't matter who this is, because uh, they all sound alike. Roll the tape. Do as I say. Thanks for doing this interview with me. I'll make a hundred percent effort to perform well. Then, uh, how come all you sports guys are like, uh, so vacuous and, uh, stupid? Well, we have to go to college, but never really attend classes. Just like, not too smart is the situation we have. You think raving about male athletes and worshipping their job straps is a little, uh... Okay. Hmm? Uh, just a little on the uh, curious side. Huh? Maybe uh, stretch it out after seeing a few tight butts. Hmm? Is that what it is? We like women. We are programmed to do so. You heard this station. Uh, outside of one show, you ever hear anyone talk about girls? Hmm? Mm, it is a little. We? Okay. There are two or three very lonely men with very small things who need to hear this. What? You say in this? Oh, I just did this one. What I really meant to play was that. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Oh, wait till you hear this fax that just came in. Uncle Neil, will the WQM van have any copies of your CD? And could you please repeat where it's going to be? I'm not really interested in free Marlin tickets. Would like to buy one of your CDs. Well, guess what, Pally? It's at the, right now at the Hooters parking lot. I assume it's still there. Am I right? Yes. At the uh, corner of Pineton University. And you can pick up a pair of free tickets to the Sadman's Marlin Cup game or the Best of Neil uh, about 30. About 30, man. CD or T-shirt. Or, or both. about the T-shirt. I beg your pardon? Or both. You can get tickets and a uh, CD. Yeah, or all, uh, in other words, all of these things. whatever you want. You want it, they got it. They probably have the shirts, too, I'm sure. Well, they probably have the shirts, and if not, they'll give you the shirt off their back, which will not be a pretty sight. Why Why does this thing keep coming up here? Oh, hmm? just honest to God. Oh, I'm, I'm just having a little computer uh, operator <laughs> error here. There we go. Everything's just fine. Iran conducted a test launch last night of the Shehab-3 intermediate-range ballistic missile, which is capable of reaching Israel and U.S. targets in the region. Oh! Israeli radio reported the test came hours before Prime Minister Ehud Olmer met with U.S. President George W. in Washington to discuss the Iranian threat. Military officials said it wasn't clear if this most recent test indicated an advance in the capabilities of the Shehab 3. They said the test was like, in fact, this uh, particular missile has got like little uh, like headgears in it that like pop out. When oh, yeah? yeah. They said the test was likely time to coincide with the Washington summit and with comments made by Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah during celebrations in Beirut, marking the sixth anniversary of Israel's withdrawal from southern Lebanon and a partridge in a pear tree. And like I said, if you Israelis and all you Arab, all you ragheads, if you want to kill each other, go ahead, just leave us out. Leave us out of it. Please, I'm begging you. Don't you think that's a uh, fair solution? It's all I ask. It's all we need. I just can't believe what's going on, but nevertheless... Well, I just want to make sure I got all this stuff uh, down where, it, where it's supposed to be. Because we only got like 28 minutes until the Marlin pregame show. God. Is President Bush likely to see Al Gore's documentary about global warming? No. No. Doubt it, Bush said very coolly this week. Doubt it. <laughs> he also said that, yeah. <laughs> it's hard work. But Bush should watch it. Gore shot back. In fact, the former Democratic vice president offered to come to the White House anytime, any day to show Bush either his documentary or a slideshow. 
on global warming that he's shown more than a thousand times around the world. Can you imagine Al Gore showing George Bush a slideshow? Maybe if he turned it into a coloring book. <laughs> oh. Or maybe if it had, like, you know, scenes from My Pet Goat. The entire global scientific community has a consensus on the question that human beings are responsible for global warming, and he yesterday again expressed personal doubt that that is true, Gore said, in an interview from France where he attended the Cannes Film Festival. Al Gore is in the can, and judging from the size of him lately, he'll be in there a long time. Bush and Gore have had bitter disagreements about the environment and other issues, yada yada. <clears throat> Gore's documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, chronicles his efforts to bring greater attention to dangers of climate change. Speaking of that, a um, spe- uh, good segue. The BBC reports, boy, you're getting awful newsy this hour, where you could be taking some really good calls. Global temperatures will rise further in the future than previous studies have indicated, according to new research from two scientific teams, the Cubs and the Mets. They both use historical records to calculate the likely amplification of warming as higher temperatures induce release of CO2 from ecosystems. They both conclude that current estimates of warming are too low by anything up to 75%. Their conclusion is backed up by a new report from the Australian government. The Australian Greenhouse Office says current estimates of temperature rise are being challenged by new research. The study predicts the global average temperature would rise between 1.5 Celsius and 4.5 degrees Celsius if, if human activities were to double the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And it goes on. Bad stuff. Bad stuff. But you know what? We won't be here to worry about it. Right? Hope not. And as far as your children or grandchildren, obviously nobody cares about them, so why bring up that stuff up at this point? Nobody cares ship about Ship them off to a mountain range. Uh, uh, there you go. They'll be uh, but yeah, I told, I told you I get till noon without all that crocking, but now it's past noon, so it's heavy crocky time once you get past noon. Speaking of crocky and hockey, how about those Oilers, baby? Oh. Wow, what a game last night. Too bad nobody in South Florida, maybe, maybe a handful of us care and watch that game. That was something to behold. What's better than staying cool and comfortable all summer long and all year long? How about getting an instant $1,200 cool cash rebate on the world's smartest air conditioner, the five-star edition of the Carrier Infinity System? You can get this fabulous system from Royce Aaron Heat, where they've been taking care of Tri-County area families and doing a great job of it for three generations. As a Carrier Factory authorized dealer, Royce guarantees your 100% satisfaction, and that guarantee is backed by Carrier. The people who invented air conditioning have now come up with the Carrier Infinity System. The Infinity System actually performs a daily diagnostic check and then adjusts itself for maximum efficiency. And don't forget now to maintain maximum efficiency on your current air conditioner. Join the Royce Air and Heat Comfort Club. Here's how it works. Twice a year, they come to your home, they inspect and tune up your system. If you have ever any kind of problem with your AC, you'll enjoy priority same-day service and 10% off any needed repairs. All of this? All of these things. For just 110 bucks a year. So whether you choose the two-speed Infinity system with Puron or peace of mind all year round with a Comfort Club, either way, make the smart choice the Royce choice. Royce Aaron Heat, 1-800-377-0075. Be sure and tell them that cranky old Neil told you to call. 1-800-377-0075. This is Neil Rogers. Rock solid. This is 560 QAM. He was trapped in ice, lived in a glass box, and spent nine days underwater. Now, master illusionist David Blaine faces his greatest challenge ever. Come on, man. I, I got to get in there. Ah. It's David Blaine on the can. Trapped alone in the claustrophobic confines of the downstairs half bath near the laundry room. Dave, I really need to get in there, man. David Blaine on the can. With only a glass of Metamucil, a nearly empty roll of Charmin, and a five-month-old Sports Illustrated. Dave, Dave, come on, dude. I so need to get in there. Don't miss the exciting conclusion of David Blaine on the can when David finally emerges from his fortress of fecal matter. All yours, man. Uh, you know, come to think of it, I don't have to go that bad. See you later. David Blaine on the can. This time around, he's making other people hold their breath. The big gate goes in. We got 1,043 votes on the poll. There's Donna Phil Everly. Wake up, little Susie. I'd say mm-hmm. 1959. That's my guess. Let me oh, look I can't verify that. it. Because huh? I only go up to 60 on this, but I, that's, that sounds about right. Uh, let's see. 1950 uh, something. Seven. Not even close. Sorry. Can't be perfect. Why not? 
Because it's me. Oh, but you'll love this story, though. We just got to squeeze this in. This half hour is an abortion, okay? We want to apologize. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, whoever heard of this kind of a uh, formatics? But, you know, the Hopper said he's back to a nine minute break this morning. At least they're selling some spots, okay? Anybody want to buy a spot? Just a few cents. About 30, man. 30 cents. We'll give you a little holler. Woman's toes licked by men hiding under car. <laughs> See, I saved the good stuff for the last half hour. I know we didn't have time for a lot of stuff, but I'll say the good stuff. Uh, almost as good as that Porta John guy, but uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, oh, this is even better. Police in Tulsa, Oklahoma. See, in kind of places like Tulsa, this is where stuff happens, Oklahoma. Police there are searching for a man who hid under a woman's car at a Walmart parking lot and then licked her toes as she loaded <laughs> groceries into the vehicle. The Tell me that wouldn't freak was, you out. The woman said she was at the Tulsa Walmart located near 81st Street and Lewis when she felt her toes being licked. <laughs> She assumed snake? it was a dog, but when she looked down, she saw it was a man lying under her vehicle. I felt something lick my foot, the woman said. I looked at him and I said, what the hell are you doing? And that's exactly what I said. What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you? Yeah, the culprit got up and ran away before police arrived at the scene. The woman said the man who licked her toes is Hispanic or Indian, about 5'9", and weighs 150 pounds. He was wearing a black t-shirt and blue jeans. The victim filed a police report, and a witness also saw it happen. <laughs> a Tulsa County assistant DA said if the man is caught, he'll face a misdemeanor charge of battery or outraging public decency. <clears throat> well, why why should there be a law against licking somebody's toes? That's assault. I guess maybe she didn't want her toes to That's be licked. That's right. Yeah. Or maybe she enjoyed it. Or maybe she wanted to try the other foot. Well, she should have said so. Could be. Don't forget, check out that QAM van at the Hooters parking lot, Pines and University, right now. If you stop by right now, you can zip right over to the ball game. Pick up a pair of free tickets to this afternoon's Marlin Cub game, which doesn't get underway for another almost hour, 105. We got the pregame at 12.30, though, which means we're doing another break right now. This is just this is just silliness, is what it is. It's embarrassing. It's humiliating. And we'll take the money. Thank you. 12.13 at 5.60, WQM. Don't forget, after the ball game, we got uh, Mad Dog, I do believe. Isn't he on today? Yes. And then Geldy, 7 to 10 tonight. <laughs> ADK follows that. If you're a cigar smoker and you like to kick back with a good premium cigar stogie, then Bahia Cigars by Tony Burhani is for you. These hard-to-find cigars are made with first-grade tobacco, processed and aged up to 10 years. Bahia is a real boutique cigar maker specializing in small-batch, hard-to-find tobacco. Bahia Gold, the flagship line, gets a 91 rating by Cigar Aficionado Cigar Insider and 9.1 rating by Schmoke Magazine. This rich-flavored, well-balanced, full-bodied Nicaraguan cigar has got earthy hints of dark roast coffee, chocolate, spice, and pepper flavors, too. <coughs> oh, I think I inhaled too hard. <coughs> also try the Bahia de Seo, the hottest release cigar in the last 10 months. Gets a high rating of 91 by Cigar Fishing Outer Cigar Insider. The de Seo is a powerful cigar, man, a big gut blaster with complex notes of leather, earth, and pepper. The finish is long and full-bodied with additional spice and a note of charred wood. For a South Florida tobacconist near O, there's nothing worse than having charred wood. For a South Florida tobacconist nearby, you log on to BahiaCigars.com or call 1-800-35-BAHIA. That's 1-800-35-BAHIA. This is Neil Rogers. This is 562 AM. Station stands for nothing. Coming up tonight on Inside the Behind, the True Hollywood Celebrity Music Biography Profile Story. They were one of the biggest bands of the 80s, despite having one of the ugliest lead singers in history. They were the Cars. Shake it up. Shake it up. Oh, yeah, I got uh, beat up all the time in high school for being freakishly ugly. <laughs> Cars frontman Rick Ocasek. But uh, then I got into uh, rock and roll and I... <laughs> what is it, Rick? <laughs> I'm sorry. Every time I think of it, I, I got that bang, Paulina Poroskova. Bang? Well, what am I talking about? Hell, I marry her. Ugly old me worked a meat stick with a supermodel. What's your girlfriend look like, butt munch? <laughs> None of your business, fat ankle. Shut up. No ass. I said shut up. You shut up. A supermodel pumped out two of my kids, tough guy. <laughs> How do you like that? How do you like that? You threw me up against lockers, but now you're freaking pumping gas. And I'm married to a hottie. A professional hottie. <laughs> Look, I'm not one of the kids who roughed you up in high school, okay? Oh, yeah? Well, well, you'll do, head. The cars. Man, if every rock and roll star got to sleep with hot women, then... Oh, wait a sec. Boy, did I choose the wrong career. Love you, honey. It's a big, juicy, sopping wet look at show business. Tonight. On inside the behind. Okay, 1219, man. The pressure is on. We've got 11 minutes to go, and we've got so many fish to fry, you know what? And another break, mm. no less. 
Now, there's a story here that I'm trying to, it won't print out, make a long story short, but it's worth uh, talking yeah. about. Bin Laden on the move, new sightings in Pakistan. Don't you think that's worth uh, just a mention here? Sure, read it off the monitor there. I will. Pakistani government sources tell ABC News that they have credible reports that Osama Yamama and his entourage have moved down from high mountainous peaks along the Afghan border to a valley about 40 miles inside the Pakistan border. The officials uh, say the reports put Bin Laden around uh, Kohistan's Kamarat Valley, whatever the hell that is. Officials said the reports were validated by the release of Bin Laden's audio tape yesterday, which appears to have been recorded only two weeks earlier. Well, how the hell do you know by an audio tape where the hell it was recorded? Mm-hmm. Such a quick turnaround suggests, said the officials, that Bin Laden is much closer to civilization than he had been of oh, I see, previously. Previous audio and video tapes have taken as long as um, six weeks to become public. Got that? Got it. So he's around Osama Yamama. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if we find him just before. Maybe that'll be the big October surprise, you think? What do you like better, a strawberry surprise or a October surprise? Well, surprise. Okay, here's the deal on the poll. Oh, look at that, 1,060 votes. We're, we're like flirting with almost 1,100 by 1,230. Even Josh can't believe that. I, in fact, I think there's a uh, bonus clause in his contract, in his new deal. Yeah. That if we that get that kind of a number, that uh, he gets like 80 gazillion dollars from, from George Beasley personal. 90. 90 gazillion? Yeah. Uh, from a Joyce. 1,060 votes if Neil stops taking calls. And we, we, what did we take today? Two or three? Three, wasn't it? I think about three, yeah. Pretty sure. About three. Yesterday was only about two. So we're five for five. Boy, that's impressive. And those poor bastards out there, what are they going to do now? Yeah, especially like about five or six of them, which I don't have to even, you know, speak of them. Like, just huh? spontaneously burst into flames. I, I would only hope so. Wouldn't that be great? 1,060 votes if Neil stops taking calls. I'll listen the same. 487, almost 46% now. Mm-hmm. How do you like that? I think they're starting to get the hang of it. They're hanging it. The callers suck, 151. You put those two together, you got over 60%. I'll kill myself, 90, and we want to see that. I'll listen less, 79. I hate this poll, 78. I'll stop listening, 45. 4.2% are threatening. They're rattling their spear. I'll listen much less, 42. I'll kiss the radio, 35. Listen more, 29. And listen much more, 24. <clears throat> Yeah, we're making a big change today, with or without the management. In other words, more, we're moving ahead, you know, and if we have to leave certain other people behind us in the wake, too bad. Right. I'm not talking about the callers. I'm just talking about the mismanagement, the, the idiots, the bozos who are like, oh, they're, they're, they're like lost at sea, man. They're like a bunch of little kids on a rubber raft lost at sea. 22 past noon. <clears throat> Don't tell me it's time for another break already. Yeah, I think it, it is. is. You think so? I know so. You're right. All my friends laugh at my new ride. But my moped is real cheap to drive. And my moped saves me lots of money. So I don't care if I look funny. Can you say the Funk Brothers? Can you say it? The Not Funk Brothers. The way you can't say it. Anyway, we've got the Marlins and the Cubs coming up next. Mad Dog after the ball game. Guilty. 7 o'clock tonight. Be sure and put your radio on automatic turn off for that. Eddie K follows uh, the Geldy Show. 